Bam! Was that a star wipe? It was a star wipe. Star wipe. What up? What up, everybody? Um, welcome to today's live stream. That's star wipe. I just saw it because we're at, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it behind. So, yeah, star wipe. That's cool. So, today's stream, well, welcome to today's stream. Today's stream is on the Infi 20, a belt 3D printer from Sane Smart. A lot of people have said, is it just a, is it a rebranded CR30? And we will find out together, because that's how that works. Also, the stream is sponsored by BuildBee. Uh, they are a, a, an incredibly fast growing, what is it, all-in-one cloud 3D printing solution. Um, it's an interesting app. I played with it a little bit. They do have a free option, but there's also uh, a pro option. And uh, through this stream, they are giving you three months free, and sponsors are what help pay the bills. So if you could say hi to Build B in the chat, but also click the link down in the description and give the pro a try for three free months. I think that's really awesome. Andrew Rogers with a 20. Awesome after the five week. Hope you have time for frosty beverages after the stream today. Uh, we might. We're going earlier. It's not like nine o'clock at night. It's yeah. one o'clock. So Crazy. milkshakes, maybe tasty beverages. Uh, Andrew speaking about the the after the five that we did. And so last week was Rapid TCT Week and we released three incredibly well-received episodes of the show from the show floor. Each episode had four different booth visits from the industrial additive manufacturing uh, show we attended in Chicago. And uh, for after the five, usually I do a director's cut. It's what uh, uh, Patreon, YouTube members, uh, float plane on the website. It's kind of like a... Uh, I, I go over the shoot or the show or behind the scenes just to kind of give people a little bit more in depth. And so for this After the Five, I believe it was 45 minutes of me just talking about the booth visits, what went down when the camera wasn't powered on, essentially. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Wow. Thanks for mentioning that, Andrew. I really appreciate that. Uh, if anybody else there saw it, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, let's see. How's the chat doing? Oh, it looks like a lot. Wow. Chat's going. I did. I thought I set a, a slow chat, but, uh, we'll see. Angela Heron, first time watching you live. Welcome to the stream, Angela Heron. Everybody can say hi to Angela. I bet she'd love that. Let's get started. So this is the Infi 20 from Sane Smart, a belt 3D printer. Uh, one of the things that I do want to show you is um, this package has been, it was treated with care by the delivery company. Clearly. Treated with Yeesh. care. Also, I'm going to spin this around, Sean. I want you to grab a shot of that right there. So Let me know when you see that. What, what, what am I looking at? You're looking at this umbrella. Okay. And the, uh, the words are, it's afraid of wet. Oh, it's afraid of wet. It's afraid of wet. Beautiful. It's a friend of wet. Uh, here is a, an unmitigated view at the box art. Oh, did I? I think I missed. Missed a chat. Lee Smith with a super chat. Did I miss it? There it is. $4.99. Are you out of your mind? I have one on order, so hope the stream goes well. I'm glad you have one on order. Um, Saint Smart gave me a code, actually. If you decide that this is a 3D printer you want, you can use code LIVE100 over at Saint Smart and get a hundred bucks off. Nice. That brings the uh, the price of the base unit down to seven forty nine. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, there's a thing that says open from here at the top, but nah. I mean, I'll I'll uh, I'll, uh, I'll do that, but will you? But I think the the box has been murdered a bit. And so I think we can, it's almost like it's a frosted cake and we just have to take off the frosting. Nice. There we go. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> look, look. You know when you take the side off of your computer system and you look inside and it's just padding? <laughs> no? No. Anyone? No. Bueller? I gotta scroll down. I'm missing comments. Andrew Osmond just joined pa uh, Patreon. Well, thank you, Andrew, for that. He's been a member Bud, for five months. Oh, for and a member for five months. That's amazing. Bud uh, Bucksbaum with 
Are you out of your mind? Are they giving thanks to Build Bait. Yeah, Build Bait. I know, I know, everybody hates advertisements, and uh, I get it, but sponsors are what make stuff like this possible, and Build B has been an awesome sponsor because I, they're offering something, I think, unique and helpful, and I think giving people three months to try the pro service for free is really nice of them. Super nice. I'm literally unwrapping this like a cake. Like, I'm just taking the frosting off the sides of the cake. Exposing the, I'm not, I'm not a big, the layers. I'm not a big frosting fan. Really? Yeah, I like the, I like the cake, the cake from the cake. You know? Sure, I mean. A little bit of extra frosting on top, but not much. Sure. How does it feel to be wrong? <laughs> I'm the same way with Oreos, though. Like, I like the cookie part, not the frosting part. Andrew Osmond, four ninety nine. Are you out of your mind? I'm just taking my time, taking my time. Brendan Lenane, Lenane, hello from Ireland. Hello. Nice. Hello. Homeland. Really? Great. Aw. So here's uh, some instructions. They give you a massive roll of filament. <laughs> loyal with a hundred bucks. Whoa. Jeez, loyal. Uh, this is for Sean. Aw, look at that. For the star wipe. That's it is for the star wipe. <laughs> it has to be for the star wipe. Uh, there's a box. Thank you, Loyal. Oh, it's it's what? fully assembled. So what? <laughs> Look at that. Sure. Nice. That's uh, okay different. Oh, it is heavy. Oh, I could stand on that. Let me know if I should stand on this for the review. Is anyone going to say no? Who would that? say no to that? I'm sure there's some. Some that would be like, "Joel, that's not necessary." Or don't ruin it. I don't I don't think you need to stand on it. Be safe, but that's not what YouTube is for. The 3D Lab 2.0, a massive roll of filament. That's right. This is, uh, I'm going to have to uh, rant just, just for a moment because, I, I mean, I get it. This is easy to ship. It's a very small amount. It's not expensive. I think, though, if you buy yourself what's kind of regarded to be a bit of a premium product, such as this Infi 20 belt printer, I would imagine you could get a little bit more of a premium experience with your filament. Something like this in a coil, I hate it. <laughs> oh, I, I hate it, I hate it because it gets tangled, it's not easy to manage. Uh, sure, you could print your own little coil holder for it, but at the same time, again, you're getting a premium experience, you shouldn't have to do that. Saint Smart, this is my challenge to you, provide a better solution for the filament that you include with this 3D printer. Oh, it fanned out like a, like a flower. Yeah. Tripod's Garage with a fiver. Of course, the fir a first adult frosty beverage is on me, unless it's a milkshake. Looks smaller than the CR30. Uh, where, oh, I was gonna, it, it used to be over there. It is smaller than the CR30. It is. Uh, it's got, uh, it, the filament pathway is the same. The extruder is on the side. It's got a chain? Oh, okay. Um, filament pathway here. It looks to be a PTFE lined hot end. Um, the belt is... Um, I want to say the belt is most likely similar to the... Um, uh, to the... Not the... Well... I've only played with the newest belt and the oldest belt on the CR30. This one feels very much like a uh, treadmill. It feels, it, it almost has the feel of the old belt pre-Kickstarter, but without all of the fuzz. Without all the fuzz. It's a little bit dusty. That's okay. 
Uh, hey, it's unboxed and it's built, so I guess that's the end of the stream, right? No? <laughs> oh, oh, the, okay. This is right up front. Uh, I will take this off. Ooh. Got it. That felt good. Urgh. Loyal, did I miss the introduction for the sponsor, Build B? Uh, you did. You did. Don't worry. We have some really cool things planned to show you with Build B, the sponsor. And um, uh, we'll do the first one in a bit. Yep. We'll do the first one in a bit. Also in the box. This is the, uh, the extension roller. Okay. The extension roller. Oh. Uh, what's kind of interesting, if you look, um, Sean, can you see that right there? Yep. So this, uh, the roller, very similar to what you would see on the version for the CR30, but this roller has feet at the end to support it, where the CR30 just relies on the strength of the material, which oh. honestly is enough. Uh, the feet are a bit overkill, but you know what? They include it, so that's kind of nice of them. It's a premium experience. I say premium because it's closer to $1,000 than it is closer to, say, two to $400. And so there's a, there's a certain level that you want. Um, yeah. It is... Uh, is it a... It is not a Core XY component. It is not Core XY like the CR30. Um, I don't know if that matters to you, but it, uh, I thought I should mention that. I'm not going to install the rollers. I don't think it's needed for this. Not for the stream. Not for the stream, but um, obviously for the review or whatever. I'll just put it down there. Sure. Look at that. It's just a small little 3D printer. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what's in this box. Oh, we've got a power cord. Small one. We've got uh, an SD card. Good. We've got um, a test tube, sample tube. Cool. We've got a pancake flipper. We have uh, some flat nips. This looks to be, I don't know what that, that might be a spool. Oh. Okay. That looks to be the spool holder on the side. It's easy. Comes with a uh, USB to USB-C cable. And it comes with a set of tools. Awesome. Um, I, like, I guess it's time to plug it in and print something. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, before we do that, why don't we do the first little sponsored bit? Sure. You want to you wanna send me over to that, Sean? No, I, I don't. Okay. I, I, I need to get, now I can. Ready? Yeah, do it. Do it. Bam. Bam. Did it star wipe? It did. It did star wipe. Okay, so Build B is designed for getting the job done quickly and easily, even if your printer doesn't have Wi-Fi connection. With Build B, you can control your printer for your phone or anywhere. It's kind of interesting. Build B itself is, um, is software, so you can control your printer from the phone. If you install the desktop version and then connect your printer to your desktop, uh, it gives you full control of the machine and uh, they are the sponsor of the stream. I find that really cool. I'm, I'm probably going to try that out at a later time. I didn't have a chance to test that out at home before we got here. Build B is the sponsor, and a big thanks to them for sponsoring it. And if you want to try their pro service, they have a free one, but if you want the pro one, they are giving you three months for free. And as a thanks to the viewers, you can go down to the description, click the link, and be a part of that journey. Link's also on the screen right now. Oh, is the link on the screen right now? I don't have view of the screen. Show is. Does it look cool? Yeah, sure. Yes. There we go. That's the one. NLTMW. Nice star wipe, Sean. Whoops. What'd you whoops? I went to the starting soon screen. <laughs> the stream screen. Oh, really? Yup. Oh, yeah, we're starting soon. <laughs> uh... There we go. There we go. Um, I think it's time. I think it's time to like plug it in. Yeah, do that. <laughs> I literally took it out of the box and it's ready to go. I don't, it's just, it's not typical. The power cord they give you is not. Um, 
long. It's not the longest. And it's all the way in front. Ooh. So, okay. Do you need another power cord? Could you grab me another power cord on the door over there? <laughs> like, well, I, I should be, should I use this? I should use this, shouldn't I? How? How are you going to use that? I don't know. That's, no, not that way. No, okay. What if I... You're going to have to swap the computer. Oh, swap the computer. With the uh, printer. Okay. I can do that. Backboard. Goodbye. The one is the weakest link. Goodbye. Do you know what the, the chain is for? Uh, the chain? So the little, <laughs> the little clip that holds the, um, the Bowden tube connector... It's the clip that goes in there to keep it from compressing down. And they have it attached to a chain so you don't lose it. It's awesome. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's kind of awesome. Okay. I know the laptop's probably got enough battery life, but just in case. Oh, no, just, this thing. just in case. There we go. Bam. Now we're it's cooking a, with gas. It's a power hungry beast, that one. It is. It has to... It has to eat all the powers. This tiny little cord, we'll plug it in. I'm gonna power it on. It could either, like, the stream could end here if it doesn't power on. Good. Success. I see power. I heard things. I see screen flashing, nice. Ooh, okay. Um, I need to turn it so I can see it. So it's got a dial that you turn. Is it touch screen? It is not touch screen. <laughs> you just like pounded on it <laughs> to verify. Yeah. It is Infi 20 brand Sane Smart. It gives, um, it looks like a model number and then contact. Okay. So there's no indication of the firmware that's being uh, used on here. Neat. Maybe they'll put, update that in the firmware. <laughs> what, the touch screen? No, the, the, the firmware. Oh, Show I see. Firmware that I see. Okay. Hey, Chad, how you doing? <laughs> uh, this is, uh, this Looks is like cool. The front has the 240 to 115 volt. Is that what that is? Yeah, and it's in, it's in 115. Nice. Yeah, or else it would have powered on, most likely. Oh, that's true. But there is the option. Wanna... Oh, okay. SD card goes on the top. Oh, that's, that's where USB plug is in. So they, they did send me a video on how to uh, level things. And uh, it says you're supposed to put these down all the way and then run the test. I wonder if it was pre-leveled from the factory and I'm just ruining it. I doubt it. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Even so, like. Oof. Okay, that's down. Baby, are you down, 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 oh, down, wow. down, 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 down? Even if the sky comes falling down. Uh, that skipped a. That was interesting. Should we, should we have music playing in our, in our stream? Can we do that? I don't know. Uh, this is kind of cool. If you could get a shot right here. No, I refuse. Have a look. I'll use my knife of pointing. Can you see the little graduation marks in there? Oh, boy. Hold on a second. It's kind of dark. Like DC dark. It really is. Okay. Can you yeah. see them now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the CR30 does not have that. Those are really cool because what you need to do is have equal tightness on either side of the belt tensioners and having these here kind of allows you to do that a little bit easier. Uh, I just got a text from my buddy Chris. The desk is the desktop not flat or does the printer have a wobble to it? <laughs> the desktop is not flat. Is not, flat. <laughs> not even close. Like uh, I, I do need to fix that. So this wobble is the desktop. It is not the 3D printer.
Let's see what's on the SD card. Please be something. <laughs> Please. <sighs> It'd be nice. Apparently, Sane Smart has its own slicer. Oh, really? Yeah. Hope everything is bright. Uh, oh. Chess, cube, nice hammer, sword, user manual, slicing software, test models. Oh. Please wait. Um, oh, okay. So it doesn't look like you can go into directories from the, uh, the menu. So my guess is everything is going to have to be... So there is a 3D Benchy. Um, on the root? Yeah, everything's going to have to be in the root. They did send me a video on how to level it. Let me just... wonder if I can... Okay. There we go. So... Layer test. Oh, okay. It's just it's just in the menu. Well, here, let's do that. Preheat. Um, nozzle. Set target. Sure. 210. Bed. I like a 60 degree bed. Okay. Um, one thing I don't like about this is there's no... Uh, print information on the screen right now, so you can't tell if the hot end or the bed are preheating just by looking at this. And that's unfortunate. That's a little unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Very. Let's see what's on this SD card, huh? <laughs> Big Jano, I vote to print a builder's mark Pooch Rock. That's awesome. <laughs> Oil did give a five. He did what? Gave another five. Did he? Well, here, let me go over to the screen that shows me those things. Uh, Loyal with a $5 longer power cord fund. <laughs> thanks for that, Loyal. Zachary 3D Prince. Oh, hey. Hey, Joel. Thanks for the awesome stream. What happened with the TV screen? It looks fine. Am I missing something? Now I don't know. Did it go out for a second? Or something? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, the user manual. I'm just looking it up on the uh, computer here. Sure, sure. I want to make sure, you know. Yeah. Oh, it smells like it's preheating. That's fun. That well, here, we're going to use this to do the layer test. They did send me a video on, um, how, it? on how it was working. Uh, here, let's, let's home. Okay. So it is, uh, oh my God. it's a few millimeters off the bed. What they say to do is, um, ugh, there's a, uh, same as the CR30, there's a box with four screws that has a hard limit for the Y end stop. And what you have to do is bring it down. I think it was pre-leveled at the factory, and I think I uh, messed it up. Ruin it? I think so. What the hell, man? I don't know. Uh, I need a different. There we go. Okay. Let's try that. Oh, geez. Oh. Did it not go closer? I guess it went a little bit closer. Wow, I gotta just, I gotta yank that down. All right. I'm just adjusting the end stop. Let's try it again.
That looks to be a little bit better. It's right on the bed. Um, okay, and then this uh, needs to be brought up a smidge. Okay, so are we tracking? No. Uh, is the Do you need to watch the video? No, 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 no. It's just the the bed riser over here is broken. It's not right. It's not uh, lifting and raising the bed. Uh, so, you know what? It's probably okay. Looks pretty good. Does it? I thought so. Looks like it's on the bed. Okay. Uh, so much. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> this is such a mistake. <laughs> I can't see. Sorry, Sean. It's okay. I couldn't see either. Oh, now I can. Okay. Looks like it's got a filament detection sensor thingy right here. Um, uh, cut it at an angle. That filament. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, uh, one of those, eh? There we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to move Y up just a smidge. The screen is nice. So we should see filament come out there. Cool. Okay. Ow, 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 it's hot. <laughs> yes, yes it is. So now we should be able to do the test. Compare, layer test. Yes. Uh, did I click it? I don't know, did you? Go. There we go. Having a layer test right inside the menu is pretty handy, so you don't have to rely on having it on the SD card. It's moving. Yeah, that I can't see. You can't see it? It's right there. It's right there. Well, you can see it clearly from the front, but not from the side. Oh. oh okay, got it. There we go. Okay, it's putting a bead of filament onto the bed. And boy, it just moves, doesn't it? Okay, that's good there. No, that's not good there. Okay. Boy, my favorite thing about these is belt adhesion. <laughs> wow. It's coming right off. It isn't right there, though. Oh, wait. Yeah, it is. Ah, <laughs> this is. Okay, it's good right there. 
This one's good. It's stuck down pretty well. Uh, it's not. It's not stuck down there. So the the bed won't raise up anymore. It's like it's. Has it reached maximum? No, it hasn't reached maximum. Can you adjust? Um, well, the, the issue we're running into right now is that the, the bed is not level across the distance in which the nozzle travels because this, this side won't go up anymore. I can't imagine that's the end of it. It, it just, it needs to go higher. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm not trying to ignore chat. I promise. He's in fixing mode. Okay, there we go. Okay, right side is good. It is uh, pretty, pretty well in that, uh, the fabric. Okay, I was able to, <laughs> I was able to shove something in there and lift it up. <laughs> it's going okay. It's holding on. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at the chat real quick, see how people are doing. Nonfam says hi to Repcord. I'm going to say hi to Repcord. Everybody say hi to Repcord. He loves belt printers, innovation. Tesla. <laughs> uh, Armando, uh, the screw could be spinning. It, it could be. It looks like it maybe. I don't know if they're going into metal. Like it might be an insert or something. Because that's up there. So I'm just going to do that over there. We've got continuous lines of adhesion. Perfect. You okay, Sean? Sean's rubbing his eye, everybody. You okay? Yeah, no, I'm fine. I shed some sleep in the corner of my eye, I think. Some sleep? Yeah, some all sleep, yeah. Okay. I have to ask the chat. Sean was just rubbing his eye, and he said he had sleep in his eye. So do you call it, if you get something in your eye, and it's the stuff, what do you call the stuff? Do you call it sleep in your eye? Do you call it eye boogers? Do you call it something else? I call it both of those things. Do you? I bugs. I, I've got successful, even test extrusion. Nice. Goop. Okay. I boogers, yeah. Goop. Okay, goop. Yeah, I boogers, yeah. Sleepies. Sleeping sand. Ice not. <laughs> crusties, yeah. Crusties, good. Definitely says crusties. Everybody loves a good crusties. It's officially called Rayum? 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 What? Interesting. Interesting. Uh, well, here's that. We're ready to do a test print. I think so. Let's do it. Should I use their filament? Um, yes. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's what they give you. It's okay. what they give you. You yeah. have to use the power cord. If you're going to use the power cord, use the Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to print the Benchy. Oh, wait. It's in the computer. Yeah, I was like, uh, what are you doing there, buddy? It is a four gigabyte card. Lame. <laughs> lame. Did you say lame? Yes. 32 or bust. Come on, they're like 10 bucks. Okay, I've got 3D Benchy, chess, cube, hammer, sword. I'm going to go Benchy. And sword would have been... We've been, we've been here for a while. I would assume we'd be here a long while. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's it doing? What you doing there? 
Huh? Moving? Moving. You just, you, you're getting low. Okay. Nice. Okay. Oh, you're spitting a lot out right there. Well, that looks like crap so far. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, I can tell it's trying to build something, but... Um, what? There are ways to do it better. So on a belt printer, like the, the first couple layers, it has to establish itself on the belt. And typically, depending on how you orient your model, it's gonna be something that is not easy to stick to. So that's why we, we call it a part anchor. It's, um, it's some extrusion on the belt that gives the original part something to stick to so that you can just break it off or cut it off when it's done. The issue you run into is that uh, without that part anchor, then it's, it's the part of your model that has to almost sacrifice itself a little bit in order to make a proper extrusion. So uh, if you just, if you have a model and you have a flat edge to the belt, then that first layer is going to be a single line of extrusion typically. And then it can build up two and then three and then four. Uh, if you, if you have uh, a point as the first part uh, on the belt, then that first extrusion is essentially just a dot. And then it has to build upon the dot. And so you end up with a number of beginning layers that look like garbage. See, it's kind of recovered. And if I look over here, it's, it's making some headway. Um, it's not the prettiest thing, <laughs> but I mean, neither am I and uh, people like me, so I don't want to judge. Uh, Vincent, the belt is flexing with the travel of the nozzle. Is it? Can't tell. Let me look real quick. Ah, okay, so what it's doing, um, it's, it's lowering the nozzle into the bed a little bit further than it should, but that's what I had to do to get adhesion on the belt. So you are right, it is flexing the belt a little bit just because that nozzle is touching down on the belt to establish that belt layer, uh, but it's, it's going a little bit too far and that's providing the flex. So if I watch it, I'm just gonna watch it. That's what I do, I watch it. I'm like the watcher. Most likely my settings are a little bit off and I don't need to have it dive as deep into the bed, but it seems to be working where we're at, so I'm not gonna touch it. Rep cord. We in the biz call that a turd Ferguson. Aw. R.I.P. Norm MacDonald. Aw. Yeah. Uh, the, the included spool is already tangled. <laughs> hey, it's out of focus. Is it? I don't know. I'm looking at it on a small screen. <laughs> uh, hey, how's everybody doing in the chat? The 3D Lab 2.0, all hail the watcher. Anders Doverud, is the belt too loose tensioned? Uh, no, uh, the belt actually has really, really uh, perfect tension. It's not too tight, it's not too loose. It looks to be just, if I can tap both sides right here, it's not indicative of a loose belt, so that's good to know. Nathan Coltis, the printhead is bending too. Right, because it's diving a little bit too much, what's gonna happen is you're going to get a slight flex in the head. So if this is the belt and this is the head and it's got to come down here, 
it's bending just a little bit because the nozzle, it's going further than what the nozzle can travel. It's not a major issue. It's just a matter of getting that home position correct so that you get adhesion, but also you get the proper layer height as your, as your belt layer. It's super tricky. So, I apologize. Who wants to see the slicer? Can you show us their slicer while it's printing? Uh, I cannot. So, the slicer is on the SD card. The SD card's in the machine. Uh, I will do a, Carl, I'll do a follow-up, and I will make sure and get some parts sliced in the slicer. I'll show you their slicer, what it looks like, and then we'll get some parts off the machine. Uh, I just can't show you right now, because I would have to pull it. Pixel Pusher Studio just got back from amazing two weeks in your home state 3D printing nerd. Ooh, that's awesome. You, uh, let's see, the past two weeks, uh, you've had some, some good weather here, I think. Some rain. <laughs> there was some good weather too, man. Yeah, there was. Yeah, we're, we're tensioned right. Um, I don't know what to tell you. So, print's looking pretty good. Tension might be off just slightly, just because we kind of went light speed to get to this point where we're at. Um, uh, and honestly, we're just trying to evaluate a first print at this point. So... Obviously, down the road, uh, like the next print, we can adjust things and make sure things look right. Uh, it's just right now, it's not, it's, not, it's not bullseye. It's not bullseye. Heinblued. I need a Death Star scale 1-1. Um, that'll take some time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I also need that. That will take a little bit of time. Brian Vine, so Joel, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing quite well. Uh, we've, so we, we had, I'll tell you the story real quick. So we had a, a really fun video that we shot yesterday and it had to do with Carl, NAC 3 d and showing us how to use the M808 G-code command for belt printing to repeat sections of G-code in order to make, in his case, an infinite chain. Um, so I had an idea and I wanted to show how to do that within the grid space Kirimoto slicer. And so I went through with Sean yesterday and we recorded it all, how to set up the range and how to set up the number of times it is to repeat. And, and we took a look at the G code and how Kirimoto is doing the automatic G92 insertion for you. And then today, uh, Jean over at Proper Printing puts out infinite printing on the 3d print mill and he wanted to print a chain on his printer and he talked about carl and what he did and and how you have to do stuff and and i was like oh crap <laughs> well now if i put a video out sunday and not mention proper printing's video it's going to be terrible and so what sean and i did is we came back today before this stream and we figured out some cool ways to to integrate what knack 3d has done but also what jean has done and then technically our way is still valid. It's another way of showing you how to do infinite printing. Carl has Idea Maker and hand edited G code. Uh, Joan has hand edited G code, but utilizes LabVIEW to do automatic pattern recognition, which is cool. Uh, what I'm gonna show you is how to do it in Kirimoto and how to verify in G-code what has happened. So there you go. It's actually kind of serendipitous that Jean put out this video today because we had time to reshoot, uh, and I think it's actually better this time. Sean, right? I think so, yeah. And uh, we're going to have ourselves, not, are we, not only are we going to have our, a better video on Sunday for this, we're going to be able to mention another creator who did something epic with it. And so it's a total win in this case, and I'm really happy we were able to do it. 
Hey, proper printing. <laughs> there you are. Sean's cool. Uh, make sure you're following him. Um, it is funny. He did have to find inspiration through vegetation. Um, I went a different route, and you'll just have to see on Sunday. <laughs> uh, uh, Virid, Viridian Warrior, Kirimoto. What the? What is that? Okay, so if you go to look up grid space Kiri, K R K I R I colon M O T O, Kirimoto. Look that up. It is a free slicing engine that is browser based, but it doesn't run in the cloud, it runs locally on your machine. So what's really cool about this being browser based, it means that you can run it on a PC laptop. You can run it on a Mac laptop. You can also run it on a phone or a tablet or something like that. And what's kind of nice is uh, printer profiles that are added to it are just, I believe in a GitHub repository and anybody can add profiles that they want to add to that. Uh, the CR30 is in there. I bet I can get an NV20 profile in there, uh, but it's not just 3D printing and additive. It's also CNC milling and laser etching and laser burning. Uh, it's really, really powerful. And so I'm really thankful that I get the opportunity to show it to you and bring more awareness to it. So there you go. That's Kirimoto. Craig Robinson. I hope you haven't asked, been asked already, but so far, what is your opinion on the Creality version? Uh, the CR30 is a fantastic machine that is 80% of the way to what it should be. Uh, the, the upgrades that Pooch over at Repcord and LDO Motors offer really start to make it a better machine. But what Carl will tell you and what I will tell you is a pro version needs to be offered. Not, not a black belt eight to 10 grand machine, but a pro version of what the CR30 is perhaps a pro version of the Infi 20, but it should have a direct drive extruder. We should have linear rails, uh, filament run out. We should, we should solve the belt issue. And I think uh, Adam over at Power Belt, he, he, sent me, he sent me a belt. So we'll see if that's, that's the solution. But a lot of people, it looks like 2022 is gonna be the year that we get some interesting belt options for belt 3d printers and uh, i know matter hackers has one i wouldn't be surprised if um filament one or ulti stick is working on one uh like i said adam over power belt has his uh the future's bright but as awesome as the cr30 is when you have it dialed in and you make incredible things conversely it's the most headache inducing piece of crap it's a joy when it's working correct and it's amazing to see the things it can make. It can also just make you hate yourself for hours and hours and hours on end. And there's really no middle ground. <laughs> it's either working great or it's really sad and you're crying. Knack 3D Designs, yeah, belt technology needs improvement. Exactly, exactly. Is this still going? This is actually looking pretty good. Oh, it's building the Benchy that way, is it, right? On a, oh, okay. Hey, why don't we go? You know, we got a sponsor, Build B. You wanna, you wanna go to the, the second one? Sure. Sure. Uh, remind, make sure this is the desktop, right? Download the Build B desktop app, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So our sponsor for the stream is Build B, and they make a cloud-based, what do they call it? They call it uh, a cloud-based 3D printing solution. What I kind of like is they have a desktop app to help manage what you've got. So if you have a 3D printer and you don't have a Raspberry Pi laying around, what you can do is connect the printer to your computer and then the Build B desktop will connect to your printer. And not only can you use the desktop app to print and do all sorts of cool stuff, now your printer is cloud available and you can go anywhere in the world and using the Build B app on your mobile device, you can then control your printer from the cloud. And I like that. I like that. I mean, there are, there are some other solutions to do that, but Build B is a pretty, a pretty neat solution. So they've got a free starter version that you can use, but uh, thanks to the stream and their sponsorship, there's a link in the description. And if you uh, click that link, you can get three months of their pro for free. And really, I mean, they're sponsoring this. They're making this happen. Thank you, Build B. And as a, as a thanks to them, just go click the link and check them out. I think it would be 
I think it'd be a lot of fun. What do they say? The Build Me Desktop app is that bridge from your printer to the internet. <laughs> I said that, essentially, just in a lot more words. Yep. Yeah. So thank you, Build B. I think they're still in the chat, yeah. maybe. Yeah, there we go. Build B. Love that star wipe. Practical printing. Star wipe. Yes. Star wipes. Give one more star wipe, just to something. Just to something? Just to something. There we go. There we go. Star wipe. Star wipe. Star wipe. Star wipe. Okay. How are we doing? You know, it's looking okay. Uh, this orientation of the boat is... Uh, I think it's kind of at an angle a bit. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I'm worried about this. Yeah, because it's kind of, it's tangled amongst itself. <laughs> well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Sure. Repcord, I'm just here for the star wipes. <laughs> Aren't we all? Aren't we all? That's cool. Loyal, share, build, be on the socials. Kyle uh, Ch Chowinard? Well, I hope I got that right. Is Buildly better than 3D Printer OS? Um, I haven't used it enough, and I haven't used 3D Printer OS enough to, to know uh, or to, to speak on that. Uh, Buildly's in the chat. Ask them all sorts of questions. But uh, I can't answer that because I don't have enough experience to answer it. I'm sorry about that. Snazzy Labs. Hi, cutie patootie. Oh, what's up, Quinn? Quinn, you need a belt printer in your life, man. I'm telling you. Just... Infinitely print all sorts of crap. Infinitely. Infinitely. Andrew Hayes, let it finish. Well, sure, I'm not going to stop it. Why would I stop it? That doesn't... Well, I mean, you're right. I, I would do mean things, wouldn't I? I would do terrible things. <laughs> I will let the Benchy finish. I think that's only fair. I mean, I still have... I still have some Sodi. Nice. I don't have all out. What? I'm all out of my soda. Oh, I'm well, you drink life. soda like it's water. I've been, I've been cutting back. This is half diet soda, half raspberry iced tea. Is it good? I call it a yum yum. A yum yum. That's an interesting name. <laughs> Auto Drop 3D. Belts are awesome. What's up, Mike? Hey, uh, remember, not that long ago, we did that experimental filament with Protopasta and Mike from Auto Drop 3D. That was incredible. In fact, so Autodrop 3D in the chat, that's Mike. Chat with Mike about that. He would love to talk about it because, Mike, I'm, I hope I'm not saying anything I shouldn't, but at, at Protopasta, when we got it working, Mike was giddy. <laughs> Mike was smiling so much, ear to ear. He just loved that our experiment worked. It was fantastic. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Squigglypuff, where do you get the infinite spool? So, um, right now, you have to switch out spools when they run out. There is no such thing as an infinite spool. However, with Marvel just real, like, like releasing the, the multiverse to us within its uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think it means that we could pull spools from other universes and have them sort of mix so we would have we would have like a universal palette that would take in all of the multiverse spools i think which right. would essentially mean infinite filament yeah it's more like the rick and morty version of it right where it's like you can <laughs> the rick and morty version you, 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 just, you just pull from other like i don't know you're, yeah. you're, oh gee rick you're, you're either uh, either in a state, Burr, of Marty. a state of existing or not existing so this is fun we've got uh hey it's boy in space how you doing, Ben? Uh, everybody say hi to It's Boy in Space. That is Ben. And Ben just passed 1 million followers on the TikTok. That wow. clock app, yeah. Million, million followers. Congrats. That darn clock app. Congrats. Robert Gerdner with a fiber. Let's get a side view of the print. I'm working on it. Sean's working on it. Literally, it's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Sean is currently off camera in his uh, Seattle Kraken jersey. Hell yeah. Just trying to get himself a, uh, a side view. 
Rain Knox. Marvel didn't release that. Quantum Science did. Touche. Touche. That is technically correct. Uh, what did they say in Futurama? The best type of correct. The best kind of correct, yes. Wayne Winton, uh, Ziltek has a five kilogram spool that I use for the belt printer. Uh, that's cool. Uh, I, I would imagine, so the Palette 3 Pro can take eight spools and if you hook up a five kilogram spool to each input, it can do failover. So you should have 40 kilograms of filament. Boy, that'd be an infinite print right there. Do you happen to know where the plate is for this? For what? It could be on a camera. Okay. See if yeah, we'll find out. Well, here is one actually. So. Nice. Huh? I was right. Well, the one that we Repcord, It's a sweater, not a jersey. Is it a sweater? Yeah. What? Wait. In hockey, it's not a jersey. It's a sweater. Well, it's a jersey, but like, but yeah, but we call it a sweater. Yeah. Why? It's just hockey lingo, man. Hockey has its own lingo. Uh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Okay. So Sean in his Seattle Kraken sweater. <laughs> Proper printing. You can print an infinite 1.75 millimeter cylinder and feed it back into the extruder. I mean, oh, can't you? That's, a, that's an infinite printer right there. Leo Castle, anywhere for 5D printing. 5D? I just want 4D printing. That way you don't have to worry about time and space. Loyal Moses. I ate 40 kilograms of filament for breakfast. It's true. Build B, which way is that Benchy printing? My brain hurts. Show us with a finished Benchy. Oh, okay. So, is there a, is there a Benchy over there on that shelf anywhere? Maybe in that brown box. Is there a Benchy in the brown box? No elemento, poor favor. Okay. I've got Benchies. I just don't have them handy. And I will show you. I will show you. So you're looking at, um, essentially you're looking at the back left corner. If you were looking at the Benchy from the back, you're staring at the left corner. I mean, I have a lattice Benchy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, here, I can do that, right? There we go. So essentially you're looking at it in that direction. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's point space. Benchy booty. Exactly. Nicholas Babetis. I think they should use Corex, Corex Z kinematics for this machine. Corex Z or XZ. Why is that? I'm curious to hear your answer. Practical printing. Still confused on the color of the filament. Is it white or is it gray? It's fair. It's, fair question. Uh, it's like transparent? No, it's kind of gray, isn't it? It's printing very grayish. Is it just because it's in shadow? You're in shadow. I am in shadow. It's true. <laughs> Drunken sailor. Not bloody left. The port side aft corner. <laughs> Hockey's got lingo. Sailor's got lingo. Wait, wait. I mean, there right? once was a ship that oh, went to sea. The name of the ship was the bully of T. The d no? You've no? done it now. Uh, Vinic Vin 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 Vinicius? Vin Vinicius? Isn't the belt moving? Um, I mean, it is. It moves ever so slightly. There is a, it, it does, um, it moves a little bit when the nozzle hits the, be the belt because the nozzle is diving a little bit too much. Uh... Lou and Gwyn, I will love 3D printing more when it doesn't look like lots of lines piled on top of each other. Oh, well, you would like resin printing because it's, it's very much not that. Uh, I would also suggest going and taking a look at Filament Frenzy on Twitter. He's fine-tuned his printers pretty well and can produce some incredible prints where the layer lines are very much not visible. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, David Spitzer, is it better or worse than the or the same as other belt printers you've recently have worked with? Well, 
I really only have experience with the Creality machines. I just have experience with two different belts. And I have uh, experiences with two different configurations of it because I do have the upgraded one that you can get the parts from Repcord. Um, this looks to be... Here, here's what's nice about this Sane Smart NV20 machine. I like that it is fully assembled when it's shipped. I, not that... Uh, assembling the CR30 was anything really difficult, but I think what helps get this into the hands of more people is just taking away the assembly aspect, no matter how easy it is, because they could make it stupid simple and there's still going to be people that won't want it because they want a fully built solution shipped to them. And that's what Sane Smart is providing. So, I mean, that's kind of cool, right? I think so. Oh, look at you with the side view. Oh, yeah. Got some dangerous cords. From, uh, from that angle, you can actually see the belt rise and fall as the nozzle moves. Yeah. Yes. It shook in. Wow. More to the side. What? What? Well, this, I, unfortunately, I can't do anything with the belt. So we're just going to have to evaluate the Benchy that's produced uh, from this adventure. More to, like, it's almost, like, dead on. Lewin, Gwen, how much did this cost? Uh, right now, this belt printer is pre-order, I believe, for $849 uh, with the roller attachments that I showed at the beginning. It's, like, $899. And then Sane Smart has a $100 off code, uh, LIVE100. If you go to the link in the description and put in the code LIVE100, you get 100 bucks off. So that takes it down to 749 for the, the base quote unquote version, which that's not too bad, all things considered, right? Under the nozzle and bed, is it a flat plate or is it a roller? Oh, Sean, they want some backlight. Uh, it is a flat plate, right right there. So uh, it comes down to a flat plate. But with the tightness of the belt, it's it's it might have a little bump in the middle, just slightly. I don't want to adjust it while it's printing. That's the problem. <laughs> I mean, I could try to tighten it a little. No, I should tighten it a little bit. Should I tighten it a little bit? It's already rendered with a fiber. Can we get a bunch of 3D printing YouTubers to do a rendition of Wellerman? Boy. I don't know. Maybe. I think of all of us, uh, Jean has the beard to pull it off. Justin 3D, the fan doesn't seem to be aimed at the print. Uh, let's find out. Yoink. Boy, that's hard to get my finger in there without getting crushed. Um, so when the nozzle is really, really close to, uh, my finger, I can feel air moving on my finger. Kepwell, any thoughts on the Duet 3 ecosystem? Um, I don't have enough experience with that to really weigh in on anything. I've got a, a oh, let's see, do I have a... I have a Project R3D Daedalus. I don't know if that's Duet 3 on there or not. I kind of don't think it is. I have, maybe I haven't played with it. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry. Shoot. I just, just kicked it. Sorry about that. Jose de la Garza. What's the estimated print time? Uh, it doesn't say. Does it just do a percentage? Doesn't say. No, it doesn't. It just has a line. 
I could speed it up. It's got a speed multiplier. It says speed 1.0. We could go faster. Like, should we go faster? Okay, how about this? I'm going to put it to, uh, tell me in the chat. Leave it be and let it just go or make it go faster. I'm trying to get some light on it. You know, the belt moves, right? Yeah. Okay. It ain't going to move that much. That's true. Chris Gulotta, can prints still warp when printed at this angle? Yes, they can. Uh, and it doesn't matter the angle. Any sort of melted plastic that has to cool, or any, any I'm sorry, any extruded polymer that has to cool can still warp depending on the speed at which it cools, the amount of temperature it takes to cool it down, um, and ambient temperature. Knack, oh, faster, faster, faster. A lot of people say 150%, so let's do that. Okay, I set it to speed 1.5. Look at it move. It's cooking. Look at that little nozzle go. It's boiling space does say 200. Ah, let's do 200. What the heck? There we go. This thing, yeah. It's cooking. There we go. It's moving. Jeez, did you just go into party mode there for a second? I did. I was trying to get it to be like not purple. <laughs> not a Silky Way FPV plaid. Well, there we go. That's that's fast. Part of what makes belt 3D printing so interesting is the angle at which the, the head is traveling to the bed. And of course, we've got a 45 degree angle here. But now you, you have to find different orientations to 3D print models that you just have already printed forever. Yeah, there, it could be that an orientation works on a standard machine, but you have to flip something or turn something in a different way in order for it to work on that. And so it's, it's a whole new world of 3D printing. Practical printing, does this make it a speedboat? I, I mean, it ain't gonna compete, that's for sure. What is it, You've, uh, you got the five minute benchies on, uh, on YouTube with, uh, what, Vez, Vez 3D, right? Benchy RGB, that's funny. Will Sandage, we should stay in party mode. That should be a t-shirt right there. That should be a t-shirt. We should stay in party mode. 2020 speed PU, clone, clone, clone. What is this a clone, clone, clone of? Could you, could you be more specific? <laughs> the insane UPS driver, the belt is flexing a bit. The whole print is moving up and down half a mil. Yes, it is. I agree with you. And uh, there's nothing we can do about it right now. We just, uh, we can see, we can see uh, if it goes. So, uh, Viridian Warrior, sorry if it hasn't already been asked, what's the MSRP of the machine? Uh, Saint Smart has it for 849 USD on their website. There's a code in the description that'll give you a hundred bucks off that. So that's not bad. Cool. Lewin Gwynn, what does the belt do? The belt is the bed. The belt is the bed. Denetius, where is Naomi? Uh, Naomi's in China. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry in China. Uh, when, uh, let's see, who tweeted? Someone tweeted this out, and Naomi said she was happy to see more belt 3D printers coming out. And I think that's the consensus among, among most people. It's really cool to see more of these machines get into the hands of people. I know this is just a pre-order now, but if Saint Smart can pull it off, I mean, 
we got it out of the box and hit print and essentially it was good to go. We only had a problem with uh, that little knob over there. And I'm willing to bet once this print is done, I can re-level things. You know, if I take some time to just get it perfect, it might work out just great. The screen on this is super nice. I do like that. Uh, it takes micro SD. I got to give it minus one for that. I like a full, I like a full size SD card. It's Boy in Space. I'm actually moving to Seattle to make Joel fix my CR30. He's not lying. Ben is, uh, is going to move. Him and his wife are going to move to Seattle, and then we're going to collaborate on stuff. I'm excited because he's going to show me how to use TikTok, and I'm going to introduce him to uh, fun stuff on YouTube. It's a collab. Perfect. It's a collab. Yep. It's a collab. <laughs> Beto Koss. Hi. Saw you at Rapid TCT. Sweet. We saw a lot of things at Rapid TCT. What was your favorite thing? And for everybody else that didn't make it to Rapid TCT, I have to ask, did you see any of my live streams? Did you see any of the booth visits we put out? Did you see the panel I moderated? And if you, if you saw any of those, which was your favorite and why? I want to know. My favorite thing we didn't put in the video. What? Thing that we might go to Israel for. Oh, Massive It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Massive It. We, we didn't get a chance to cover Massive It, but their booth is, it was really cool because one of their, uh, Jeff, one of their salespeople s found me. It was like, uh, our marketing person sent me an email and said, go find 3D printing nerd. And I found you. Like, uh, it, was, it was crazy. So he found me, made, sh made sure we were going to come by the booth. It was last day. So on our way out, Everything was packed up because we had wrapped for filming. We stopped by their booth. And oh boy, it is insane what Massive It is doing. It's, it, I don't want to spoil it, but it's, it is instantaneous UV gel curing as it's coming out of a nozzle. As it's printing, yeah. So, so if you are printing layers and curing the UV gel as it goes around, that's great. But if you start printing this way, as long as you have a surface that the gel is touching and you're curing it right away, you technically don't need any supports to do this sort of overhang. Which blows my mind. Squigglypuff, how does vase mode work on these belt machines? Uh, you could build up a vase that would be uh, at 45 degrees, or if you um, build up uh, a platform for it to print on and then print out that way, I think that would work, right? You know, I know the bed is flexing, but it's looking good. Yeah, it could just be due to the filament that it's hard to see defects. But I mean, so far, besides the the overhang area, the very the very front, the the, back, the, the rear aft, yeah, the rear aft, or whatever, I know aft port, port aft. The port? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no boat terms. Uh, Christer Nicholson, can you see any differences between this printer and the Creality CR30? Uh, yeah, there's a ton of differences. Well. Yeah. There's a lot of it the same. It's, I mean, it's a belt printer with a 45 degree nozzle that's Bowden fed. So it's already like 80% the same just because it's that technology. <laughs> but uh, CR30 is Core XY. This is not. Uh, the, the control box is mounted up here rather than on the side. The yeah. side. Thank you. This, I'm, like, I'm like, pretend there's a CR30 in front of me and, and, right. yeah. and do it. Uh, it takes micro SD, CR30 takes SD card. Like, I don't know what, it's, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, smaller bit, uh, belt, yeah. Uh, belt material is a little bit different. It feels more like a, um, an unfinished treadmill belt. Uh, it's, it feels more similar to the fabric belt of the pre Kickstarter CR30 than it does of the, uh, the newer retail ones. Sergeant Dinger, best way to remember port is it is four letters long and so is left. Oh. That's friggin' genius. Yeah. 
Joseph Cobble, 49 99 Are you out of your mind? Okay. Here's my contribution to the Milkshake Fund for Sean's Starwipe Research, as promised. Nice. I love it. Thank you. We will put that to good use. To good use. Yeah. We got to make the picture in picture bigger. You can barely see me. I I'm know. so tiny. That's in, that's in software, though, for the I, ATEM I, Mini, isn't yeah, it? It's really okay. ATEM Mini software. I can't do it well without it. Uh, buy on a tech. So I see the model wobble a little bit with each upward and downward motion. How will that affect the overall infinite Z height quality? Well, um, it remains to be seen. So the reason that it's wobbling is just because the nozzle's diving a little bit too low and putting pressure on the bed. And I did that just so it would get good adhesion because we were having problems earlier. But it looked like I was making a, a decent line for the adhesion test. Uh, now, though... I look to be a little bit low. <laughs> it shouldn't affect print quality too much because it's only moving the model when it's approaching the bed. Anytime it's above the bed, the model is in that stationary position, I think. Uh, Tripods Garage, gotta go. Work overload later, everybody. It's been a slice. Ha! Uh, huh. I see that. I see that. I see what you did. Man. I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not giving any chance to the... That's kind of the point, though. I, right? get, well, I guess, kind of. Oh, take it easy, Carl. Knack 3D's got to go. Everybody say bye. Thanks for stopping by, Carl. I really want to fix the belt. I don't want to stop the... I don't want to stop the print, you know, but I want to fix it. Yeah. Jasper Mathiasen, plenty of room for improvements. Ugly prints at 45 degree angle. Am I missing something here? Well, sure. Um, this is the first print off of a machine with no tuning uh, and just improperly leveled bed. And so you can't judge the entirety of belt 3D printing uh, via this by itself. Um, it remains to be seen the quality that can be achieved because I do want to level it properly. And I'm going to have to wait until this print is done because it's going along just fine. Um, but there's a lot of really cool, high-quality prints coming off of belt machines that are out there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of cool. The Atomic Soul, anyone got info on the UV resin extruder? Uh, oh, the one we were talking about, you want Massivit. M-A-S-S-I-V-I-T. Massivit. Massivit. Robert Griffin with a 20 for tonight's Milkshake Funds. High five, Joel and Sean. High five. High five. I love it. Oh, my goodness. John Stern, doesn't it have a pause? Well, it does. Uh, I would it, it has a pause, but if I adjust something while it's paused and then hit print again, we're going to have ourselves probably a layer shift, and I don't want that. Brian Wasneski. Hey, Joel, should I send money for shipping on possible return mail if I send in fan mail? And also, can I send you a 3D print? Well, uh... I, I, don't, I don't understand quite. Uh, you can always send 3D prints for the fan mail. Um, those are cool to see. As far as um, sh on shipping on possible return mail, I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean, but I trust you to make the right decisions. There we go. Hmm. John Stern, if you want to print comets, do you need a Koopy or belt, <laughs> belt printer? I see what you did there. That's pretty good. I like that. That's space humor, which is really, really a good type of humor. So we are, it says we're like 25% of the way through. That can't be true. Is it true? I kind of don't want to stop it, you know? Why would you stop it? 
I don't know. Sean Klein. Hey, Joel, when are you going to build a Voron? Uh, it's it's scheduled-ish. I've got a V0.1 kit from LDO Motors that I'd like to put together. Uh, i got to print the parts first. Uh, I'm going to use some blue ABS for my C3D, I think. Um, and then assemble it. The goal is to, to stream that process and uh, just take my time with it. So the problem is with a stream, usually I'm trying to get stuff done in a decent amount of time. You can't do that with a Voron. You got to take your time with it and do it right. So we might do a couple streams, kind of like Tom Sandladderer did with his Voron build. That's the, that's the goal. John Stern, just take the sock off. Uh, the sock is not hitting the build plate. It, or I'm sorry, the belt. Ugh. It's not the sock. It is the nozzle itself. Crow guy, four ninety nine. Are you out of your mind? How does the build material compare to the CR thirty? The CR the CR thirty retail versions have. Uh, it, it feels more. I don't want to say waxy, but rubbery. It's 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 different than this. This feels more like the fabric belt of the pre Kickstarter CR thirty than it does the retail belt on the CR thirty. I hope that makes sense. That's a lot of words coming all, calling out, coming all at once. Kick skull with tenor. Is the belt reversible? Is the surface any different on the other side? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. I can't. I can't look right now. But I mean, I'm sure we'll find out. I, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Lazy Norse probably need a pointier nozzle. Not necessarily. Uh, you really, you just need, so if, if the nozzle is at a 45 degree angle to the belt, you just need to make sure that the chamfer on the nozzle is at a higher, is, is it, is it a higher angular degree than it is of the 45 that it's approaching, right? And so if, if at 45 degrees, you're the, the flat part of the nozzle. <laughs> I can't explain this. Sure. If it lays flat on the bed, you're good. Uh, if the back end is too much, then you can't do 45 degrees. <sighs> we got there. I'd have to draw something. Isaac Gelman, hard to see with the material. Any Z-wobble so far? Uh, it doesn't appear to be. It looks proper as far as a print goes. That's why I'm really curious about it and I want to let it finish. Chris Lane, Venturi 3D. Revo nozzle won't work yet. Um, right, right. So so the, the chamfer on the nozzle on the Revo, I think, is like that, right? Which is, which is good for standard 3D printing because I, I think you want that, that, that right there. I think. I'm trying to remember. Um, oh, excuse me. So a lot of people played with the Revo before they announced it. I know Chris Russell had a beta unit. Um, Nero. Nero 3DP. I think it's Taylor, right? He had one. Yeah. Um, other people had one. I like the idea that they're putting forth as far as their nozzles and their ecosystem and the one-handed change, uh, nozzle change. I, I don't know. It's interesting. I can't wait to play with it and learn more. It seems really neat. Adelowo Oyedrian. Boy, did I murder that. I'm sorry. How about a, a not 0.8 nozzle on the belt printer? I See, I like that idea. I, I really want to put like a, a, a 1.0 millimeter nozzle on a belt machine and just spit out plastic infinitely, really fast. Strong, infinite parts, right? I think that'd be fun. Laszlo, filament tangles looking scary. It is. We're, we're in the end times now. We're in the end game, Tony. Peace in our time. I want to put a shield around this 3D printer. A suit of armor around this 3D printer, right? Isn't that what it is, a suit of armor? That's his thing, right? And there we go. Okay. 
Uh, handled, sort of. Bionic Tech, let's see. Do you, uh, you think a belted Z will improve the quality and take some weight off the rest of the gantry? Would it be better implementation than throwing belted Z on a bed slinger? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I don't have any ex a lot of experience with belted Z, so I know some people really like it, some people don't. Uh, I, I don't know how I feel about it yet because I haven't had a lot of experience with it. Obviously, the belts are running here on the Y-axis. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird calling that a Y-axis. Vaporcat, it's just Nero 3D now. Oh, okay. Oathkeeper, a belt printer. It prints belts. Just the thing I was looking for. My pants are loose. Ha! Ah! It can print a belt. It could print belts. A belt, print a belt on a belt printer. Should. That's a video. Copyright, Joel Telling. <laughs> uh. Denetius, I want to know. Oh, this is in regards to Revo. Okay, I want to know what E3D patented because there was already a hot end that released that could change like that. I don't know the answer to that. And obviously, as I... I mean, I'm, I'm friends with the E3D team. I will attempt to talk to them and find out more information. I really want to go to the UK. Same. I want to go to the UK and have some, uh, what, fish and chips. I want to go to Ireland and have some Guinness. That's it. That's all I want to do. So uh, it's just, it's like a day trip. Well, a day trip there. Yeah, yeah. A day there and a day trip back. <laughs> hey, it's building stuff. Like, we're going. Kept well. Camera guy. Close your dial, please. No, close your, yeah, your, di your diaph, your diaph. Please, we need more depth of field. You want more depth of field? Can you get more depth of field? I don't know. Yeah, I can go down to like 5.6, but then I got to increase my ice though. Victor Santana, do you see a difference between the two belts, Infi versus Creality? I do. Uh, this is, I, <laughs> I know I've said this a couple times now. This is more similar to the pre-Kickstarter fabric belt than it is the retail belts on the CR30, at least in my experience. Carl Fenton Fish and Chips, that's right. D with 3D, that bet you needs a raft on the back left corner. It is not back left. It is port aft. It's port aft. Port aft corner. Port aft. What's the front of the, the bow? Bow. bow the boats up front, right? Yeah, yeah, and then the aft is back. Vector roll. I use a copperhead heat block with a Creality radiator and Creality nozzle on my CR30. I also have a Bontech LGX for my extruder. Well, that's kind of cool. That's kind of really cool. Jeez. Oh, I wonder if kids are home from school. Maybe it is a school day. Yeah, Jack. I don't know what I don't know what I don't know boat terms. <laughs> D with 3D. Excuse me. <laughs> don't worry. Don't you worry. Jack, leave the aperture. Yeah, I adjusted the aperture. I'm gonna head up. Sean is an aperture ISO. friend. He's and I had up the ISO, so uh, you know you can see it. There we go. Look at that. I got a little. Got a little alien. A little booger. A little booger. Little booger! Printer sleepies. Printer, that's right. Brian, it costs like 12 bucks to mail you things from where I am, so I'm kind of curious for stickers if you choose to send some back. Also, it's pronounced Wozniki. Wozniki! Okay. Leg uh, so, uh, Brian, Wozniki, listen, if you send in fan mail and it's, it's going to take me a trip to the bank to take out a home loan to send you stickers. I could use some help with that. <laughs> Otherwise, I will find a way to get you stickers, I promise. I just went through a bunch of stickers. Let's see. Where did I put those? We got to get new ones. I do have to get new ones. <laughs> so I went through my drawer, and I was looking for uh, all my stickers. 
and all my. Uh, are, we, are you gonna get a shot of that? I suppose. Maybe sure. Maybe gonna be like I don't know. That. It's not. It's not that exciting, is it? Maybe. I don't know. I went through looking through all my stickers and business cards, and so I got a bunch right there. What is that? That's proto pasta. That's cool. Oh, I got a lot of stuff to sort through. My debt, my my bench here, it's just full of stuff. It's is it a mess? You're it's a mess. full of stuff, but it's not a mess. You're a mess. Mm, I am. <laughs> In your sweater. In your sweater. Cake skull. I wonder if a mosquito hot end would work at that angle. Um. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. May maybe? Maybe. 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 I don't know. Only one way to find out, honestly. So, you know, I think it might be time for that third. Uh... Oh, is it? You want to wanna give a shout out to Build B, our sponsor? The third and final. Well, we got four. I had three graphics. Oh, you have three? Okay, well, we'll, um... I was given three graphics. There's four in the document, so I'll just say the fourth one when it's time. I'll make it. Clear. No, no. No, I, it's actually, it doesn't need it, because it's all about the free three months. Nice. <laughs> okay, let me know when you're there. There. Is this the one where it's the all-in-one 3D printing software? This is three free months. This is the three free months? Yeah. Oh, okay. So... Uh, Build B, our sponsor for today, it's a, it's a fast-growing all-in-one cloud 3D printing solution. Um, I like it as, it's kind of neat because it's, it's, you can install a desktop app which then connects to your printer and it allows you to print from anywhere and to control it. Uh, from the desktop of the desktop app because it's cloud-based, then you can have the phone client to control your 3D printer as well from anywhere. Uh, it is, well, let's see here. Build B is designed for getting the job done quickly and easily if your printer doesn't have Wi-Fi. Okay, we talked about that. So it's got a, a variety of built-in design apps for making things like logos and lithophanes. And there's nice. a full design tool called MakeCode that lets you publish your own 3D printing apps, which is kind of cool. So they have a starter free version. You can go get it at any point. There's a link in the description. But thanks to them sponsoring today's live stream, you can get three months of Build B Pro for free. Normally, there's a cost associated with that, but they're sponsoring the stream, and they would love to have people come over and check it out. And so, and so using the link in the description, it gets you three months of Pro for free. Free. Uh, they sponsored the stream. Big thanks to Build B. They're actually in the chat. I don't know if they're still there, but uh, this is awesome. They made this happen, so if you get a chance, click their link in the description. Show them a little love as a thanks for sponsoring the stream and making it happen. Thank you, Build B. Uh, it's nice of them. They were in the, I don't know if they're still in the chat. I mean, it's, it's a long stream. It's a long stream. John Stern, lithophanes are cool. They are cool. Uh, I've yet to make one. I've yet to print a lithophane. Uh, let's see. Kieran Clark, uh, Tara Cup, yeah, but running. What am I looking at? Cake Skull, picture and picture and picture pog. <laughs> Yahtzee. There was so much pip. It's all the pip. Sirloins of steak, F R E E, that spells free. Yep. That's true. No, yeah. I. To make a live stream go, um, what we typically have to do is um, is split up the week a little bit just because the, the week is usually a lot of business, email, preparing prints, Sean's editing and creating graphics. And then we, we try not to work on the weekends, but that doesn't That's ever yeah. happen. So um, in order for a live stream to happen, we sort of have to put work on hold and push it possibly to weekends. So for a sponsor to come in, it makes it incredibly worthwhile to be able to do this. And so uh, I'm excited and very thankful for Build B for doing this. And so if you can click the link in the description, it'll just show them a thanks. That would be, that would be incredible of you. 
Yeah. 3D Musketeers. Milkshakes? Is there milk? Oh, okay. Some milkshakes. Rory Jardine, any suggestions for free CAD software? 3DPN. Uh, go to Tinkercad. Tinkercad.com. That's CAD. It's easy and it's free. As far as beyond that, um, there's something called FreeCAD. You can install. It runs on PC, Mac, Linux. Uh, it's it's an interesting workflow. I did I did learn it enough to recreate my eight color rainbow that I did in Fusion for the Mosaic Palette Three Pro stuff. So it is possible to learn it. It's just um, takes some time. So go look up FreeCAD. There you go. Uh, is Blender Blender free? Yeah, but that's not that's not so much CAD, it's not is it? CAD. It's just modeling. Yeah. yeah, modeling and sculpting. Fusion three sixty is also free. It, kind of. It's kind of sort of sort of free. I hate I hate when people ask for free, and I I just don't like mentioning Fusion three sixty in that because it's really really not. Uh, I mean, it kind of is, but it's really not. I don't know. If you get the chance, go check out Free CAD. I think. I think that's the that's a good way to do it. Oh my goodness. I'm just trying to make untangle this that. yeah, untangle. It looks like it's kind of untangled itself a little bit. Just I mean a little bit. I was going through the they probably saw the camera lens. Look at that shot. Yeah, other than that first corner. Other than that first corner, it's uh it's good. I I think it's good. Uh, Adriano H. Aguilar. Hi, Joel. Good to get you. Well, good to... Thanks for getting me. Good to see you. Colin Campbell, uh, welcome back. I get bored too. It's okay. You're still cool. Nick Darrow, Onshape is free. Onshape is free? I didn't know that. Huh. Huh. I didn't know. I didn't know Onshape was free. Oh, look at that angle. Oh, that Benji from that angle looks crazy. That yeah, looks cool. You know, I kicked it up to 200% speed, and it's it's cooking. Like, it's cooking. Robert Gerdner, just get SolidWorks 3D Experience, 10 bucks a month. Absolutely worth it. Interesting. Okay. Um, I, I tried SolidWorks uh, a while ago, and it, it just, uh, the problem was I had learned Fusion 360. So going into SolidWorks, it just didn't feel right. I'm sure if I spent time in there, I could actually make it work. And uh, use it, <laughs> but yeah. Alberta 3D. Hey, welcome. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, how did it go? It was fully assembled in the box. We got it out. Uh, we leveled the bed. I didn't do it quite properly, so it's a little bit off, but print is still going. Uh, it's, it's looking decent, and uh, we're going to let it finish and, and see how it looks. It's looking really good. Like, honestly, it's looking really good. Control Pew. SolidWorks also has a hobby license, and it is a very different learning curve. That's it. That's it right there. Thank you for mentioning that. It's just different. Like, every, I know a lot of people that use SolidWorks and love SolidWorks, and it makes sense. If that's what they learned and grew up on and honed their skill set on, SolidWorks is the way to go. But there, I mean, there are a lot of people that use Fusion 360 to get up and going in the CAD world. And I think intermixing between the two, just it, it, the workflow is a little bit different. So it just takes, uh, it just takes, it takes a little brain, a little bit of brain bending, I think. I think. what I get? Oh. Oof. Ooh. 
I am impressed. So here's the thing. I, I like it. Like, I, I know I can nitpick about things, but my initial impression of the machine is good. It, the Benji's looking decent, and it's, it's just going to, I would hope, get better once I level the thing properly. Denetius, print a 3DP wrestling belt with your logo and wear it. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, it should be like, like the Speed Benchy Championship held every year should, should give the winner the Speed Benchy belt, which they get to wear and bring back next year to, to you know, defend their title sort of thing. I think that's a really good idea. It's beautiful. Look at this, the little printer that could. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Was that like an eight inch belt? Eight inch wide? Uh, I don't know. I don't know where my tape measure is. Uh, control Pew. Wait. Oh, you had a good comment up here. Hold on. Where'd it go? Uh, most of my community uses Fusion because it's free license is more powerful. Free Cat is just a pain trying to fully constrain Kenches. Yes. Um, in Free Cat, it is very, at least in my experience, specific about constraints and, and, and having to do that. So uh, I hear you. Like, I hear you on that. <laughs> uh, Victor Santana, which belt would you prefer? Or do you still think there's room for improvement? Um, for adhesion, the pre-Kickstarter Creality Fabric Belt is the best that I've used. I believe Ulti Stick is making one. Matter Hackers has a belt in development. Adam at Power, Power Belt 3D sent me his belt. And so there's a lot of belt solutions coming up. And so I whatever I know right now is not going to be valid in the next three to six months because we're going to have some newer belt options that are probably going to have better adhesion for the range of materials that people want to print on these 3D printers. That's my guess. RC Maniac 25, the more belts, the better. Exactly. There are dozens of build surfaces for 3D printers and people ha can pick from any of them or use the dozens of adhesives that are available for your build surface. Uh, I hope the same goes for the belts. Like I hope, I hope we get a myriad of belt solutions and adhesives that make printing on these things just more, um, more continuously successful. Joel Driver, FreeCAD has never changed their terms of service. <laughs> Touche. Uh, I love it. You know, if you like SolidWorks, if you like Fusion, if you like FreeCAD, I don't care. Just make all the stuff and have fun with it. There are a lot of people proficient in Tinkercad really, really well. And uh, you got to hand it to them. That's, that is not an easy thing to do. I don't think. Mm. Everybody stay hydrated, please. Wayne went, uh, went then. I swear I saw someone build one with Kapton tape. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think probably Carl with NAC 3D did that initially. I think. Hmm. Now I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to try to remember that. <laughs> Dougal, MS Paint. That's funny. Chris Lane, Tinkercad is underrated. I would, uh, I would have to agree. It's like one of those things where if you just want to do something really simple, it's super powerful in that. I mean, you can do the advanced stuff doing all sorts of shape math, but uh, if, if you like, if you, if you have a project and it's something simple, loading up Tinkercad and just making it go 
is probably one of the easiest things you can do. Dr. B with a tenor, do you have any tips for leveling the Creality Belt printer? I have endless issues with getting adhesion, perfect leveling with the two I have. Uh, Dr. B, I highly suggest you check out the videos that NAC 3D has done and uh, and the cre there's, a, there's a CR30 Discord, Discord group, I believe, but there's a community Marlin firmware for the CR30 and it allows for things like negative offsets on the Y axes which makes it a lot easier for belt leveling. And uh, it's what I have on the, the two CR30s on the wall that I have in the other room. And honestly, it, it's, it's awesome. So look up, look up the CR30 community firmware. That's your first step. And I know uh, Carl at NAC 3D, I think has some videos on it. Um, God, Pooch over at Repcord is the one that told me about it. Uh, ping, you know, if you ping uh, Marlin or Scott Latin or, or NAC 3D Designs on Twitter, they could probably tell you more about it. I just don't, I don't know the links to the Creality CR30 community firmware right yet. But I, so I, sorry, I, I, but, that's, but that's my recommendation to you. The community firmware is the way to go, way to start, makes leveling a little bit easier because you can do negative offsets on the Y axis, and it does some other cool stuff. Alberta 3D, why no nail polish today? Um, uh, my daughter Riley is the one in charge of painting my nails and she hasn't asked to do it lately, so no nail polish. That was easy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not my fault. Uh, I've been talking a lot. That's why I'm trying to drink my water. I don't want to stay refreshed. Uh, uh, stay refreshed, yeah. Mm. good that's good everybody take your time hydrate make sure you're warm and cuddly curl up on the couch with a blanket oh that sounds you know what sounds really good you know what sounds really good like pajamas and pizza and some some captain and coke while watching the martian i agree with everything about the martian i mean the martian's fine the martian's wonderful it's a great movie but uh it's not one of those, it's not for me what it is for you, which is one of the ones That's you, fine. you just put on, you know? Fifth element. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Julian Simital, better late than never. Almost missed this. Well, I'm glad you didn't miss it. Welcome. Malut, quick overview of the machines for the late joiners. Uh, so this is a belt printer from Saint Smart. It's called the Infi 20. There's a link in the description and it'll take you to the website where you can order it if you're interested. There's also a code listed in the description if you want to get hundred bucks off. It's uh, similar to the CR30, like 70 to 80% of the way there, just because it's a belt printer at 45 degrees that's bowed and fed. So, I mean, it has to be similar to in some respects. It's a little bit smaller. It's a different belt material. It's not a core XY uh, motion system. It is, it is uh, one motor controlling X and um, one or two, motor, two, two motors. How many motors are on Y? I want to say two, but maybe two motors on Y. Um, it's got a control box up top. Uh, I don't know if it's running Marlin or not. It takes micro SD. Uh, the hot end's a little bit different. It is an interesting addition. Uh, it looks to be doing things right because the print quality is there. Wow. And uh, it's printing at that weird angle. So that's kind of cool. The most recent. Can you ask your daughter to paint your nails again sometime? You looked rocking. Uh, we'll see. It's up to her. No pressure. She gets to pick two nails when she wants to do it. So usually she picks these. I figure she should pick eight. John Stern, I'm amazed at how mostly clean that print is. I would have to agree with you. Like, it looks legit pretty clean. Other than the port. Aft. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the, the initial angle. Yeah. But the orientation makes sense because you can print a benchy without, uh, without supports. 
the angle from the back is the crazy angle. I know you can't get that, but like it looks weird with all the, the infill. Can we turn it? Uh, yeah, I can turn it and point it that way. Here, here, come over this side. Come over and just kind of look right up in there. Look right up in there. Isn't that a cool angle? Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I can't get that unless you turn it. I can turn it. We're turning the printer. Okay, let me change the camera angles first. Okay, change the camera angles. Walk my happy butt back over here. Jonathan Hutchins, is it possible to use E3DV6 at 45 degrees? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. You're gonna have to get low. Yeah. That's all right. Get low. Get low. Get low. Stop. <laughs> to the windows. Uh. No. Okay. <sighs> oh, look at! I haven't got to look at it from this direction yet. That's kind of cool. Sean's setting up a new angle. It's gonna be awesome. And it does wobble a little bit because my desk is not flat. Zinc the Cyborg. It is just mesmerizing to see it print like that. Kind of seems wrong and unconventionable. Unconventionable? Boy, I am out of my energies, aren't I? Unconventional. I agree. It's kind of really cool. Sky, your boy, uh, how much? Uh, 849 retail. There's a $100 off coupon in the description and a link to the product page. John Stern, this is where Joel breaks it. I didn't. I didn't break it. It's still printing just fine. It is. Somehow. I'm surprised. Honestly, where is Pooch when you need him? Because this should be on a wall. <laughs> what are you looking for? I think the props up the camera on. Okay. I can't use anything else. Oh, yeah. It's got to be this low, you know? Do, do you want me to find something in here? Huh? What? And then, huh? Do you need to stack it? There's also this. Okay, hold on. I'm giving you options. I know. Look at this. This is a, a drawer pull. Yes, it is. Baby, are you down, 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 even if the sky comes fall? Demonetized. <laughs> yep. Sky, your boy, this is CR30. Ooh, that's tough. I don't have enough uh, use on this to really feel how it works, but uh, first indications are it seems to be uh, a machine that can print at high quality. William Steele. Hey, that's Bill. Bill, the original angle printer person. The polar printer person. Brian Wozneski, printing my first ABS Benchy. Any tips? Ooh. Um, see, an ABS, uh, just print the right temperature and, and go a decent speed. It shouldn't be too bad. It's not a large ABS part. You shouldn't have to worry too much. Uh... If you have yourself, like, don't print it in a cold garage. Make sure you're in a, a temperate room, but you, you should be all right. Co-creates here. Hey, what's going on? DB Shadow, are we there yet? No. Julian Simitel, got to save some of those Milk Duds boxes to stack. It makes sense. Uh, Victor said 10 is $100 off only during the stream. I don't know the answer to that. So when they told me about the coupon code... I said, how long is this good for? And they didn't write back in time before the stream, so I don't know. Here, I'll, I'll see if they've emailed since then. I have the ability to check emails. Nothing from Saint Smart, so I don't know the length of time that it's valid for. Sorry about that. Uh, Ivan Teruel? Teruel? Boy, that's sad that I probably murdered that. Uh, is it just me or is 3D printing becoming an addiction? Uh, it's one of those things where so legit. Like, I, I don't... Use a Benchy. No, it's just, it's like I just need just a little bit more, but not a lot more. Use a, use a pancake flipper. 
I got it. Okay. The problem I have with 3D printing right now is I don't, I miss my hobby. So 3D printing itself started as a hobby that I did because I enjoyed it, right? Everybody would go to sleep and I'd be up late at night doing my hobby because I've got hobbies. I'm an adult and I can have hobbies. Um, then it became a bit of an addiction because I started making content around it. And now that it's a fully fledged business for me, I don't have a lot of time to just sit for a couple hours and tinker with something without considering filming it or saving it as content. And so I hope to get back to that point. I hope you understand. <laughs> uh, let's see, where was that question there? Ivan, yeah, okay. So that was, that was from uh, Ivan, yes. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. And then, uh, Skya Boy, will you be making more videos on this printer? I will. So, belt printing technology is super interesting to me, and I think that the more content I can make around it, either about my discoveries or about the cool stuff I find out it can do, the better. And so I do plan on that. BM, 642 watching, only 287 likes. Come on, people. We can get, let's get to... Get to 300 likes if you could. John Stern, Joy should take up quilting. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of time. Uh, Fab Pro Design, they don't ship to the UK. I didn't know that, I'm sorry. From Tetralite, Saint Smart TPU is great. Can it handle TPU? It is a Bowden style 3D printer. So if you if you have a Bowden machine that can handle TPU, then most likely the same conventions apply to this. Lyndon Martin, will you do an update on the uh, SWC2? Oh, the Sidewinder. The Sidewinder? Is that right? The Sidewinder. The Sidewinder, right? SW for Sidewinder. And C2, is it the X2? Landon, you're going to have to confirm that. If it's the Sidewinder X2, I can, I can talk a little bit more about that but I want you to confirm it. Oh, TB3D Dan, what's up, brother? Good to have you here. Push the filament off the bench so it unspools itself. Sure. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Okay. Wasn't that what uh, Kabi Lami does on TikTok? The most, tic most of the famous TikToker, right? The most funny. He goes, hmm? <laughs> oh, yeah. Landon Martin, yeah, the X2. Okay, so the, the Sidewinder X2, it's an interesting machine. Uh, you saw the, the dice tower that I printed with it. I mean, it looks exquisite. Um, I did share in my After the Five for that episode that it did experience a frozen state where it just stopped, and I had to power cycle it, which was interesting. Um, bed adhesion's been okay. It doesn't come with a flexible plate, which is weird. Uh, the ribbon cables, I'm just waiting for them to break. I hope they don't. It's a silent printer. It's, it's pretty quiet. Uh, everything I've printed with it has been awesome. I hope to have a review out on it. I'm trying to do that. Trying. Oh, look at that angle. That's a good angle. Oh, that's the, uh, let's see, the one I'm seeing, is that from the C70? Uh, like, like on that, I can see that, that's cool. I like that. We make 3D, print some skis on this machine. Oh boy, the, the, the skis I would print would be brittle, and I would probably fall or impale myself and die. So, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> David Spitzer, Joel living in the future because he's using loose filament. Well, I mean, it's what they sent. It's what they sent. How do you get rid of this? You know, it's, it, it's got a coil where it's coiled one way and then it goes the opposite way. Isn't there a way that you can... No, that doesn't work. <laughs> I'm 
I'm going to stop touching it. <laughs> Bill Steele, I really like this angle. The angled printer's angled print. <laughs> Lucas Pohl, is your business just around YouTube, or do you also print custom? Uh, we... 3D Printing Nerd is, uh, is, a, is a content, is a media production business. So we don't do a lot of bespoke or custom printing unless like, uh, like my wife says, can you print something for me? That's about the limit of it. Um, I hope to in the future expand different verticals. So like bespoke custom printing or possibly retail sales. But right now it's just media production. Control Pew, I have faith in you, Joel. Print those skis. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I could see it being a lot of fun until it's very much uh, a trip to the hospital. But, you know, that's never stopped me before. As a kid, I used to jump off my roof. Jetpack Rider, you might prefer a snowboard. Not as easy for impaling. Oh, but I've got talents. I can imagine. Like, like, can you imagine going down the slopes, just carving it up, and then all of a sudden, you know, the material goes snap. You know, you could do. You could print skis or, I don't know, it'd be a pretty thin snowboard, but you could do a snowboard, and then you could do like a carbon fiber wrap. Huh? Huh? Ooh. Build B, brain hurts just watching this. <laughs> loose filament, John Stern. Loose, loose filament sinks benchy ships. Oh, look at that. So right, um, right there, that would be a place where the roof needed support, but it, they didn't put it on there. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, that's a fun angle. Look at that. Weird. What bit rate are we streaming at? 5,000, I think. Really? Our internet's handling that? Wow. Capwell, you can print them and invite someone to test them. That's really true. Paul Cumber, how, you, how have you been? Good to see you, my friend. Paul Cumber, what is the build size? There's a link in the description. If you click it, it'll take you to the product page and tell you about it. I think it's, um, I should have this up. I should have this up. Sains. I'm going to go find it right now. Oh, look, if you go to YouTube, or if you go to Google and look up Sains Smart Infi 20, it's got this video linked. That's really interesting. Okay. Sane Smart wants to show notifications. No, no, no. What is happening? 3D printing. It's just... Okay. Sorry, I'm looking. I can't... Something happened. I'm really sad. There it is. Is that working? Yes. 200 yes. by 180 by infinite. 200 by 180. Okay. So 200 on X, 180 on the Y-ish. Yeah, well, the Y. It could be more. So one of the things, uh, the print head itself is in a position where it rams itself into the top bracket or the top extrusion. So it's missing about that much height on the build just because there's no room for the head to go. I was uh, very close. I said, is that about eight inches there? And it was 7.8. Well, it's 7. roughly, it's, uh, rough, it's 25.4 millimeters per inch. So it's roughly 25 millimeters per inch. So it's roughly four inches for 100 millimeters, roughly. Yeah. Willie Esther Huizen. Huizen? Holzen. Oh, I'm murdering it. I'm sorry, Willie. Calling you guys. See you again tomorrow. Or th see you again. Thanks for a good stream. Hey, thank you for stopping by. 
Lucas Pearl, is Core XY worth it? Yes. Uh, Core XY paired with an advanced um, firmware. So uh, upcoming Marlin or Clipper with Input Shaper allows you to achieve crazy speeds on 3D printers with really decent quality. Go look up, um, if you go to YouTube, look up Vez 3D, V-E-Z, V-E-Z, 3D, Vez 3D. And uh, that dude has taken it to the limit and has, I believe, a speed Benchy. He's printed a Benchy in less than five minutes. Access denied. Cool bug facts. This printer is failing just like me. It's failing? What? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, oh, someone's asking about the Octo print. So let me. There's a thing I want to share about that. Okay, I got to find the thing where they said it. Um. Ah, uh, ah, uh, here we go. So it's, so from Saint Smart, um, we recently received an email from Octoprint pointing out that we use incorrect images on our product page. And after double checking with our product team, the integrated Octoprint is indeed misleading. And the web UI previously illustrated in my previous email is actually ESP3D. According to our product team, the Infi 20 uses Octoprint API key and allows users to control their printer with Octoprint compatible apps like Polymer and Octo Remote so they don't need to set up a Raspberry Pi for Wi-Fi control. So there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, NLT MW. Never let the machines win. I love that. Uh, thanks to Build B for sponsoring this live streaming event. Yeah, a big thanks to Build B. Build B's in the chat. Everybody say hi to Build B. They're the ones sponsoring this. And they've got a really cool deal going on because Build B does some really cool stuff for 3D printing. If, and you can actually do remote control of your 3D printer on your phone using their software. Um, they have a free version, but uh, viewers of the stream get three months free of their pro version. There's a link in the description. Uh, thanks to Build B for sponsoring. And uh, go click that link. Oh, I'm thirsty. How are we on that progress bar? We are 65% of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, John Stern, 339 for Vez 3D. So uh, Vez 3D on YouTube does incredibly fast 3D printing, and he's got a machine that can 3D print a full-sized Benchy boat in three minutes and 39 seconds. Wow. That's insane. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Tatiana Montalegre. Mon Montalegre? I don't know. You put a little B in there. That's great. Thanks for that. I love it. Landon Martin, happy printing. Take care. <clears throat> like, it's looking good. It's looking good, dude. Yeah, I like it. I still have it set to 200, 2, 2.0 speed. Should we go faster? No. It's set to 200% speed. Let me know. Should I go faster? <laughs> Ludicrous speed! <laughs> Ludicrous speed. Luda. Chris Lane, yeah, 339. Vez 3D, it's, it's incredible what that person's doing on the YouTubes. Let me guess, Clipper? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kepwell, is there any tool changing printer with more than four tools? Uh, currently, yes. So, the, um, the stuff from uh, Diabase Engineering... 
the H5, the H5 400. The video we did on that, technically they've got a tool changer with 14 tools, technically. Everybody says go faster. I mean, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, at this point, I'm gonna up the nozzle to 210 just to give the PLA a little bit of extra heat since we are gonna turn up the speed. I think that's fair. Oh, it won't let me go above 2.0 for speed. Oh, sad. PLA back down. Dang it, I tried. Ugh. Sean, what was that? My light. Well, how did that happen? You banged on the desk. Stop. <laughs> I tried to go fa I really, really tried to go faster. I'm sorry, everybody. I tried, it won't let me go past 2.0 for speed. It is software limited. John Stern, you got to go in 15 minutes. Okay, I'll see what I can do. No guarantees. Oh, DeWitt, hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, Solus, what's a good recommendation for a 3D printer for around 500? Uh, shoot. I don't know. I, I mean, I know what's out there. Ender 3 variants, uh, Sidewinder X2, the Genius... I think those are around 500, right? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Bruce and Minnie. Um, um, what did we just do? It was a JG Maker one. The, or the, the BQ B, B plus? No. I'm out of it. I'm sorry. I got, I got nothing. Julian Simital, Sean, favorite Power Ranger. That, okay, that's tough. Why did you? Why? Why did you have to? When I was growing up, it was by far it was the Green Ranger. You know, I mean, you know, I was I was like the right age for it, right? I was like the six, five, six years old when, when Power Rangers came up. And then, uh, but then, as I got older, I was like, oh, the nerdy one, the, the Blue Ranger, has got to be my favorite because I'm a nerd and I love that. <laughs> but now I'm reading the comics. In the comics, they're writing the Black Ranger, Zach, like, uh, like the the comedic relief, like the like he's like he's like a Spider-Man. He's he's super like um, witty when he fights, and I love that a lot. So he's becoming my favorite as I read the comics. Aww. Uh, real quick, John Stern, the FL Sun Super Racer is, uh, I believe it is below 500. So good call on that. I forgot that's the printer over there in the corner. William Steele, has anyone cracked one of these open to see the electronics in it or looked at the safety features? Currently, no. So as far as I know, right now, uh, myself, Chuck Hellebuck, and 3D Print General are the ones that have the NV2, the NV20. I'm not sure about other people. Uh, Chuck, I know, had a problem with his. He had a clog, and when he had tried to remove the Bowden tube fitting, it snapped off, so he's waiting for parts from China, he said. 3D Print General hasn't shared much, but on Twitter he shared a Benchy that looked really good. I don't know if he's cracked it open or anything yet. Um, once this is once this is done, I mean, we could try to flip it over and take a look. Might destabilize it. Shane, if you're looking for that Megazord print, we're working on it. As soon as we get the filament from... Working Dave. on it, Shane. As soon as we get that film, film it from Dave. It shipped out last week. Oh, you do, Bill. Okay, good. Andrew Osman, do you need to make a purchase to use the free version, or can you cancel after the free version is up? You're talking about the Build B three months. Uh, they're in the chat. You can ask them. Uh, just tag Build B. Uh, I believe the three months free is is as it is just free i don't think you are required to make a purchase in order to get that i don't think so i think they just want you to kind of try it out and see what it's like it's still fun to bust john's chops on it that's amazing noble 117 would you review the frozen sonic mega 8k well dang i mean i want to it looks 
It looks cool. I mean, Angus put out a video on it. I mean, you've seen the thumbnail. It's just a picture of Lola Bunny's resin printed butt and eight and K, and it's got like a million views. And so I, I could I, I could print a cartoon character, show its butt, put some text on screen. I can get a couple views for that, right? <laughs> I think so. I love Angus. I, I love that guy like a brother. Uh, I'm glad he did that. You know, congrats to him for some good views on that video. Yeah, no kidding, man. That's awesome. It's really, really hard to get a, a review video up there, but it's a very engaging thumbnail. Nothing gains, a, a, I guess, a click more than a cartoon butt. I guess. I guess. Dommy1911, Benchy looking crisp AF. Just seeing some minor flaws. Uh, yeah, I would say that's I would say that's about correct. There's some minor flaws in there. I mean Especially for 200%. We're going we're going 200 percent on that. How are we looking back here? You, put, you moved it. I did move it just a, just a bit a bit. So it looks like the belt is a bit loose and we could tighten it up. Loosey goosey. Just a little, just a little bit. Just a smidge. Mr. Gladen, what about a real butt? I assume you're talking about the thumbnail and uh, that's not allowed. <laughs> Auto drop, yeah, it's not for the first print, right? I just hit print and I know there are some issues with it and it's the model on the SD card, so it should be a shining example of what this printer can do. But honestly, I mean, it's not looking too bad. Uh, Master K-Lock, that belt looks interesting. Offhand, you say it's better or worse than the Creality one. Uh, so far, it is similar to the pre-Kickstarter Creality one that I used, and it's, it's better than the retail Creality belt, I would say. After one print, though. After one print. Who knows? Well, I mean, who knows? But it feels fabricy. It feels sticky. Like, if you can get the filament just right, it's going to stick to it. Whereas the retail belt, it requires seasoning. 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 Mr. Gladen. Okay, okay. Bear with me. A thick benchy. I'm pretty sure someone modeled a benchy with a butt. I'm pretty sure that exists. And if it doesn't, it'll probably exist by the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, just let, let butts on things know about it. Isn't that TikTok or YouTube or something? Or Instagram, butts on things? Butts on things, yeah, that's an artist. That's an he artist. just draws butts on things, yeah. Uh, practical printing. Let's see, Mr. Bunch, but what I've seen, this looks like a lot better out of box. Uh, I would agree. I would say that's fair. Out of box, it's... Uh, for the most part, it was just hit print. I, I think one of the issues that I, I ran into is that when I tightened things down, it may have been already leveled from the factory. I didn't try a print, but I just tightened everything down to zero and kind of went from there. I guess we'll never know, but it is printing. Oh, man. Pro prints. With a hot, well, A, 299, are you out of your mind? And you're saying, hi, well, hi, hello. Norman Fair, a butt chi. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Alexander Thompson, irrelevant question for you. Ender 5 Plus or CR10 or any other low cost, high volume machine you recommend? Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, the, what's that, what's the bigger Ender 3 called? The Ender 3 Max? I think, I, I think that does a good job. Uh, the, I think the, um, the Sidewinder X2 is sized right. I think, I think that's a good one for that. Um, I haven't played with an Ender 5. Uh, it's been a while since I've had a CR-10. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, 
Incendium 87, to be fair, was it the CR30 you had much earlier in the design process than this, and this benefits from the CR30 design? That's 100% true, right? And there's there's no way you can say, there, there's no way you can ignore that, right? I've, I've had a pre-Kickstarter uh, CR30. I've had a retail CR30, and I now have a retail CR30 with upgrades from Repcord uh, that you can get on his website. So I, I've had some different CR30 experiences, and... Um, No, no matter the ones that I have, uh, I'm not getting the quality out of those that I'm able to get out of this just right out of the gate. So there is something to be said for that. Yeah. Ab Abdel Rahman Ib Ibrahim. Boy, I hope I didn't murder that. I made a belt 3D printer for my grad project. That's fantastic. That's actually really, really cool. Control Pew, you don't have an Ender 5? No, I do not have an Ender 5. I have a, what do I have? I have a, I have a CR. You have an Ender 7? I've got a couple Ender 7s. I've got some Ender 3s. I've got uh, CR 30s. I've got a CR 5 Pro? No, CR 6, CR 5. It's a big boxy one that I haven't taken out of the box. Yeah. You have a couple of CR 6 SEs. Oh, yeah, I still have some CR6 SEs. That's right. Oh, so CR5, CR5 Pro. It looks like an Ultimaker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yeah. You took that out of the box, didn't you? I thought we did a stream on that. Could be hallucinating. Maybe. Oh, Bilby used cold Joel is awesome for a full year of Pro. First 10 only. Whoa. That's awesome. Look at that. Okay. Well, uh, Build B just said if you use Joel is awesome as a code, you get a full year of pro. Just like that. At first 10. So if 10 people want to click the link in the description and use code Joel is awesome, full year of pro for free. Wow. That's cool. Thanks, Build B. Yeah. Could I do that? <laughs> Sean's going. Are you going, Sean? No, I'm not. Sean's not doing it. Okay. I won't take away from the... No, I don't take away. It'll be fine. That's kind of cool build me. Wow. <sighs> it's really dusty. Well, I mean, uh, if you saw the beginning of the stream, you saw the box had a giant hole in it so air could get in. Yeah, that, that's why. That's yeah, that's why. <laughs> Maybe I'll print my three D generator it. The benchy looks not bad so far. I would agree. Oh yeah, you want to print a sword, right, Sean? Yeah. A big sword. A big sword. Big sword. Maybe I'll print it on this. You could. For the you review. Yeah. You could take it home. Sure. Your cats could uh, walk on the belt as it's slowly going. Yeah. I'll just put something over it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Noble 117, thinking about buying a high volume Core XY printer. Any suggestions? Well, I think a lot of people are going to just yell Voron at you yep. to build it. Other people are going to yell Rat Rig at you to, and, and just to build it. Um, if you don't want to build it, uh, you could go to Project R3D and get a Daedalus. It's Core XY, I think. Yeah, that's Core XY. A uh, great machine with great support. Robert Barnes, I don't see any strings. How long has it been printing? It's well, it's been, uh, it's been, what? It's a couple strings. It's a couple strings. Uh, it's been printing as long as we've been streaming, so hour and a half? More than that. Two hours? Two and a half hours. Okay. Two hours probably by the time we got out of the box. And oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little bit of strings. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a couple there. It is fascinating to watch it from this angle. <laughs> Dougal, an S-shaped word. <laughs> Alan B, a rail core. Yeah, you could get a rail core kit, put that together. Yeah. I still remember the first time I saw a rail core. And Tony was like, or no, Sean, it was at Murph. 
And Sean was like, I was like hey, 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 you got to come over and see this, dude. This. It's awesome. <clears throat> so I did. And Tony told me all about it. Right, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then we put out the Murph video, and everybody loved it. Everybody was like, what? And now they have the, I think, another one coming out? The Mini? Uh, do they? Oh, that's right. Vary a T, I'd say, or get a Hypercube Evolution. Sure. Uh, Lednick, how is your Daedalus treating you, Joel? Um, I haven't had a chance to use it much. Uh, I'm actually going to bring it home so I can play with it more. <laughs> I miss it. Which one? The Daedalus? The Daedalus, yeah. 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 Where is it? I was... Uh, Alicia Hoflack. Are you going to take a look at the Ender 6? I don't know the answer to that. I don't currently have it in, in the plans. Pro Prince, do you have a resin 3D printer? Uh, the, the room behind the TV is full of resin 3D printers. I have like 12? That's accurate, right? Yeah, but resin never does do good on the channel, so... Not, not a lot of people want to come to this channel, 3D Printing Nerd, for resin. They go to Uncle Jesse. But people don't go to Angus's channel for resin, and he, he has a, a million-view million. resin review. Yeah, a million, yeah. Just got to print cartoon butts. Speaking of my uh, cartoon butt... No, my... Um, <laughs> my uh, See you later, John Stern. Tina Mel. She's dead. Really? <laughs> What's wrong with it? Well, now nothing's sticking to the build plate at all. And also, when I say, hey, do this test pattern, it's just the lights. There's no test pattern. So there's no cutout. Oh, all the lights are on? Yeah. Uh, oh, which means uh, your LCD is dead. Yes. Yeah. You can get a new one of those. Yep. No, I'm saying it's dead. I, gotta get... I thought you meant dead like it wouldn't power on. Oh, no, no. Uh, Victor Santana, any upgrades you think you would do to this printer? Uh, unknown at this time. It's doing a really good job without any uh, upgrades at this point, but any belt machine, I think uh, direct drive is going to be good, and uh, linear rails, I think, is going to be a good thing. But I don't know. I mean, it's doing okay, so I don't know if it needs any upgrades. Unglued. 3D Printing Pro is where the real resin videos are. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, that guy is amazing. Because it's not just it's not just resin prints. He's teaching you how to properly print with resin. Teaching you how to do the manual supports and why you do the manual supports and where you do the manual supports. Oh, 3D Printing Pro is amazing. Amazing. Oh, that guy's so good. So, so good. Mad Monkey, welcome. Blake Schwank, Schwanky, what angle is it at? This is 45 degrees. Mr. Glayton, you should get a nice little Voxelab Aquila. Uh, uh, I keep hearing everybody wanting to see that. Everybody video. wants to see it. Everybody's already done videos on it. I think um, uh, Tom Sandladder did a video one. I know Tom Tom did the video on that one. That's what's kind of turned me off from it because it didn't have any of the protections in place in software. And so it is it is much much more similar to an old um, A8 without the protections than modern 3D printers because it can it can just overheat and smoke. It it has that um, it has that possibility. Kevin Carpenter, I have no knowledge of 3D. Well, stick around. You'll learn some things. <laughs> tech for C, Tech for Kids C is the Elgo Mars 2 Pro, a good beginner resin 3D printer. Ah, uh, I like it. It does a good job. Um, it's one of those things where it just it seems to be a really good example of price for performance. It's not too expensive, and it does a really good job. Hey, we're entering the end game. Yeah, I see this print smoke stack. So once it finishes the bow of the boat, then it won't have to do the, the travel as much, and it can concentrate in that one little area.
Kyle Chouinard, what about 3D printing actually gets you excited now? I like, uh, I like low cost with, and I also like innovation. So low cost in the consumer segment is kind of interesting. It's, it's one of those things where sometimes it's in the form of a clone machine. Like if, if a company can produce a clone of a machine, but come in at half the cost and it still does a really good job I think that's innovative in a way because you're democratizing the ability to use that machine and you're making it possible for more people to use that machine. Um, innovation. I mean, there's some stuff happening in the world of consumer 3D printing, but a lot of stuff is going, going on in the, the industrial world. So we were at Rapid TCT recently and a lot of the stuff we saw is just insane. Like the three videos we did last week covered our booth visits that we did. I wish I wish we would have had a larger crew because we could have covered more booths and it would have been incredible. Everyone there was showcasing some insane stuff. I think there's a lot of excitement in the industrial side and I, I can't wait to show you more. I really want to get people hyped on the industrial side of additive because there's some crazy stuff going on and all the experience that you, me, and others get by tinkering with these home-based machines, these DIY machines, all of that experience transfers to the industrial side as relevant experience. Uh, and it's just awesome. David Spitzer with a fiver. Thanks, grabbed a year of Build B Pro with Joel is great. Well, high five, David, glad to, glad to see you got one. Enzo, hey Joel, massive fan of the channel. What are your thoughts on glue for adhesion? Uh, I like flexible, uh, powder coated PEI sheets. Those are some of my favorite sheets to print on. Build tack for me is a bit hit and miss. Um, smooth PEI is a little bit hit and miss. Um, carborundum glass from manufacturers is a little hit and miss. So if I don't have to use adhesions, I go with powder coated PEI. I like the stuff from multi stick, I like the stuff from Wham Bam. If we're talking about adhesion only, I like. Hairspray on the CR30 belts. It works great. I'm not even kidding. Um, on my Ender 7s over there, I'm using Magic Goo, and that helps with bed adhesion because those beds don't hold onto anything at all. I like Hairspray and I like Magic Goo. Uh, Vision Miner makes their nanopolymer adhesive. Uh, I, th that works pretty well too. It also does a lot of stuff for holding onto high temp materials. Whereas uh, Magigoo has the different stuff for um, uh, different formulations for different materials. The, the uh, Vision Miner stuff just seems to work. And so that's pretty good too. I do like the Vision Miner stuff. Control Pew, Flexi Magnetic PEI for the win. Exactly. Exactly. Anytime you can remove the build plate and flex large parts off, it is just a joy. The noise it makes as it slowly separates is wonderful. It's so fulfilling. We need more of those. Just, just being able to flex it. Just, and it separates. And it separates. Those are good. Those are really, really good. Jigger War, nanopolymer for the win. Yeah, the Vision Miner stuff is super kind of good. Like, I remember when we did the video at Vision Miner... Uh, with Rob and Patrick. And both of those guys are easily always on 100% of the time. Like, they are full go. full uh, All gas, no brakes, right? Uh, and they talked about their nanopolymer adhesive and how it's awesome and how people should use it. And they gave away a bunch in the videos. And then something funny happened. People started getting it. And they started talking about, wow, this really works. This really helps. This stuff really sticks. And so they've just been continually selling it now. Like, people love it. So uh, if you get a chance, go to Vision Miner and check out their nanopolymer adhesive. Legit. Whew. Unglued. Dollar store washable glue sticks. I'll probably still spend less than a wham bam. It's true. It's true. Um, but some people don't want the glue stuff. Some people like the sheets. Uh, 
some people are like, I'm just going to use what I can find. Like it, it, everything is valid. That's the best part. Every you, you work or you use what works for you. And if it works for you, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. That's what I say. I wish I could turn it up to go faster. I know. Like it's almost there. It's so, so close. close. Control Pew, removing the print bed from the machine keeps the bed level longer. Exactly it. Um, there are additives that you can use for build plate adhesion that hold the thing when it's hot and then when it's cool, it just pops off. Uh, so as an example, on the carborundum glass in the Ender 7 right now, I'm using Magic Goo and it holds it really well, the PLA, when it's warm and when it cools off, it just releases and there's uh, the, the piece can just be brought off the build plate, no problem. And so magnetic PEI sheets, I do like that. And, uh, and if you have those, it's great because I, I, I mean, just being able to flex the part off. But if you can get, if you'd rather use build plate additives, you can get the stuff that releases when it's cold. And so you end up without having to, um, without having, having to wrench on the bed to get something off, which will save your level for longer. I like that. I like that stuff. Angela Heron, bye. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, Bill, it's looking really, really good. I'm glad you've got one on the way because uh, I'm amazed at how this is looking. I am legit amazed. Kyle Chowinard, I'm still using Aquanet on a mirror glass tile with my Maker Farm Pegasus. Oh, that's awesome. And I bet it's working great. <laughs> Mr. Clayton, I got a busted group, Joel, in chat. Already kept me 40 minutes later. Sorry about that. Hey, thanks for uh, staying with us. Thanks for having fun with us. I hope to see you in the next one, man. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Bill Steele, on my resin belt printers. <laughs> you stop. <sighs> Sweet flex, bro. <laughs> That's amazing. Ah, uh, we're nearing the end game, Tony. Is that what they say? No. David, I see stringy on the back. Um, there's a couple, just a couple strings. Like nothing, nothing bad. Like we're gonna get a close look at this when it's done, because it is almost done. Almost. Uh, Aiden Bushman, is this 3D belt printer better than before? Uh, I know there were some problems before. Uh, I mean, so far, print's going well. I would say print's going well. Yeah. Uh, Oathkeeper says, good to have people like Control Pew in here. Honestly, I... Here's the thing about my live streams and 3D printing. I know there are all sorts of people who print all sorts of things out of all sorts of materials and all of these things they do, they do all sorts of things. So I just wanna welcome everybody in here. And so I, I'm really enjoying this chat. Everybody, regardless of where you come from or what you do with 3D printing, everybody's been having a really good time and it's it's just amazing that we can have these conversations and and enjoy this for what it is. And so, I appreciate everybody leaving any preconceived notions about anything at the door and just having a good time with all of us. Uh, I, I just I really specifically wanted to say that it's been it's been an absolute joy in this community being able to experience so many different opinions and thoughts on things. And, and ways of printing. And, uh, and like I, I just said, everybody is welcome here. And so I just thank you for joining me. Just a little bit, I just want to give a little love out there. Just a little love. Hybotics, 628, that's, that's two pi. Just a ping for being a great creator. Thanks, Hybotics. 
Six twenty-eight is two pi. Two pi. Two pi. That's tau. Yep. Well, pi day is March fourteenth, three fourteen, yeah. right? Yeah. Tau day, two pi, is June twenty-eighth. Nice. The more you know. <laughs> uh, Julian Simitel, you went over your lunch break. Just uh, if I need to write you a note, let me know. <laughs> have, a, have a good one, man. Thanks for joining us. I'm not sure that's how that works. Is it? Is it? I don't know. I could write a doctor's note. Um, Please excuse Julian Simitel. He was busy learning things. Dr. Joel. Wow, practical printing with Doctor? all the hearts. I love it. Hey, look at that. We're almost done. We're almost done. Oh, I can't wait to look at this Benchy up close. I can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Man. Hey, there is a, a local company on the peninsula that wants us to come by and look at the Form, uh, form Labs Fuse, the Fuse 1, the SLS printer. Sure, I'll do that. Yeah, we'll drive over to, drive over to the peninsula. David, do you get joy when you have to do a review on a 3D printer that is just the same as another 3D printer? No. <laughs> Not at all. So if... I've refused a lot of machines because I don't think that they, um, they offer anything new. If, if a new machine comes out and it's a clone of a machine and it's the same price as that machine, it really doesn't make me want to show it off but if it does something different or if it's found a way to cut prices like crazy or if it offers new functionality to the user that's what you want to show off there she goes come to me benchy come to me oh look at that look at that wisp do you see that wisp right there I see it. that is amazing it's just hanging out straight across that is a sweet wisp Okay, so just to give you an idea, are we still on this? Sweet wisp, bro. Okay. Well, it's dead. We killed it. <laughs> Benchy overboard. So we did have the nozzle squishing into the bed quite a bit. So belt adhesion might not be as good as that pre-Kickstarter belt that we talked about on the Creality. Um, I have some hairspray. I'll have to try it sometime. So this is like the Creality belt, and it is leaving a little bit. Do you see that right there? So here, do you want me to just put it right here to take a look? Yeah, sure. Okay. I don't want to take off that wisp. Maybe move it up a little bit. Maybe Which way? That way. Oh, you want the boat to go? Like... No, the other way. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> all in all, uh, I, I think that is a great Benchy. I think that is a fantastic Benchy boat. I think what really surprises me is how simple it was to get this. Remember when the CR30 came out and it was new and cool and trying different things and slicers weren't ready for it and extrusions were weird and we just took a machine out of a box, fully built, leveled it for the most part and hit print. <laughs> That's all we did. So. We're at that point now. We're at that point where the technology has matured to make it so we take it out of a box and it's ready to go. No assembly required. That, I, we're in a good place with this. Like, I know this is just the first print, but at the same time, it's the first print and it looks this good. I, I can't wait to feed more filaments into it. I can't wait to slice more models with it. I know... Um, NAC 3D was really interested in the Sane Smart Slicer, so uh, I want to dive into that. Uh, man, it's just... Um, it's good. Like, this is good. This is good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it a little bit. Have a look at that side. Oh, you know what I'm curious about? Here, i got to look at this real quick. ha, ha, ha. So you can kind of, kind of see it. Um, 
So it says 3D Benchy on the bottom, Sean. Let me know of a good way for... Um, here, wait. I got an idea. I got an idea. You want to cell phone it? Well, if I put a light behind it, we might be able to... How about if I... Do you see the words in that bottom layer barely, just a little bit? Barely. Okay. So that's really interesting, right? Because that's part of the model that usually would be flat on a build plate. So it's going to be uh, flat. It's going to be one or two layers of that. And then it's going to be uh, a bridge. Or a bridge, yeah. Or a, yeah, a bridge, right? Yeah, yeah. Bridging over the... Uh, but on the belt printer, it's going to be on the belt side and tiny little motions in Y that's going to make it. And because the nozzle was too close to the bed, it's probably not as apparent as it should be. But I mean... I would say that's, uh, that's impressive. Avache, that's impressive. Victor Santana, sold, sold, sold. Yeah, I... I, uh... Oathkeeper, it's got barnacles. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's got barnacles. Oh, thanks. I'll put my generous spool of filament on the spool, the spool holder. Sure. It doesn't help. Here, wait. It was just kind of in the way. All right. All right. There we go. How about that? Sure, perfect. Is it? Yeah, let me just. No, I got to move it that way, don't I? You're good. You're good, man. Am I? David Spitzer, I would love to see you print a full-color sword from Zelda using your palette. Um, ooh, that's a tough one. So the, the problem you run into is multi-color uh, multi printing requires a specific slicer to be able to do stuff. So you would need, you would need to come up with a way of doing a transition tower on a belt. Oh boy, with eight colors, that would be. I don't, even, I don't know if you can do that. You might be able to do it uh, with a side purge. So typically, when you have a 3D printer doing multicolor, it utilizes more of the build space that you have um, horizontally rather than vertically. And so, with this, because the build space isn't necessarily, like, when it first starts printing, it only has, it, it can't, it's like a line, right? It can't print much. It has to build it up over time because of the angle of things. So you could do multicolor 3D printing if you did a purge to the side, where if you if the nozzle made it to the side of the machine and just purged 100 millimeters of filament or 80 or whatever it is until it got to the new color and the purged filament would just fall off to the side, then you could do it. Well, now, now I'm interested. Bill Steele, I know you know a guy, Bill. I'm surprised you're not working on this right now. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got ourselves a fantastic Benchy, and we've had ourselves a wonderful stream. Uh, we're almost going on three hours here. Yeah. And so I think at this point, before my voice fully gives out, <laughs> I think we're going to call it good. Uh, this has been one of the most successful streams ever, I think. 3D printer just worked right out of the box. We, we took it out of the box, put it on the desk, hit a couple buttons, and out pooped a Benchy. That looks really good. That looks really good. Yeah. I don't know. You got anything else, Sean? No, I don't think so. Well, thank you to everybody for joining us on this live stream. I had a really good time. Um, uh, new video coming out this Sunday that we just reshot earlier today, taking into account Proper Printing's video he released today. And so we give shout outs to knack 3 d to Proper Printing, and we do some really cool stuff with uh, the Grid Space Kirimoto Slicer, which has 
Profiles for belt printers. So that's fun. All right, well, if you made this far, you're awesome. Thanks for the stream. We'll see you on the next one. And as always, high five. Oh, we gotta got wait for it to catch up on the YouTubes, right? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Boy, yeah, that belt is kind of loosey goosey.